beautiful shiny silver pot in the middle as Roddy Forsyth was explaining the oldest national football trophy in the world the Scottish Cup awaiting the winner this afternoon this is the 137th final you can hear the noise you, you can't quite smell this atmosphere but it's a little bit pat like Goodison Park on, on Thursday night all over again it's like being at a big concert with the dry ice sort of rolling out over the stage I mean away to our left that Rangers end you can barely see the fans in there for all the smoke I feel a wee bit sorry for some of those fans you won't see the start of the game at this rate it'll clear away and uh, we've seen some great atmospheres recently you know the Europa League final the FA Cup final last week we're talking about Goodison Park this is absolutely up there with them Referee Willie Collum blows the first whistle. No one can hear that inside the stadium. The players take the knee. Rangers in the left half of the field as we look at it from up on high, attacking the goal away to our right. They are in the light blue shirts, gold numbers on their backs, white shorts, black socks, red tops to the socks. Giant roar rings out round Hampden Park as the game kicks off and Rangers play the ball from left to right and Liam Boyce bundles into John Lundstrom and Rangers win an early free kick. Dare I say, Alan Hutton, there is the potential of extra time and penalties this afternoon if we level after 90 minutes. Five changes to this Rangers team. They won't want extra time. Yeah, of course, it's always a possibility and after, obviously, midweek, that's not what they'll want. They'll want to start this game on their very aggressive on the front foot and try and get themselves in front so that doesn't happen another cracking atmosphere for you on five live and bbc sounds goodison park was quite something on thursday night this isn't too far away free kick for rangers bouncing one into the edge of the area from tavernier chance for liam boyce pass fit to start the game for hearts they're all in maroon with white trim bringing the ball out from the back Barry Mackay caught by John Lundstrom so Lundstrom's been fouled and within a minute he's decided to commit a foul to get his own back and Hearts get the free kick it's one of those ones where I've a couple of tackles done on already he's excitable at the start of the game the referee's not been carried away with it so far but the hope that the Rangers wanted to start this calmly we ain't going to be able to do it it's really starting fast Stephen Kingsley is the left-sided centre-back for Hearts. He takes the free kick and it's knocked out of play by Connor Goldson for a throw-in. Two Hearts attacking position on the left-hand side. Five changes for Rangers, three changes for Hearts. Next break in play, I'll run you through the two lineups. Good chats, though, in the build-up about the two goalkeepers, central figures this afternoon. Not Alan McGregor for Rangers. It is John McLaughlin, the 34-year-old, uh, who joined from Sunderland a couple of seasons ago. Uh, once played for Bradford as a League 2 team as a substitute in a League Cup final against Swansea also played in a winning League 2 playoff final that season and this afternoon it's the Scottish Cup final at the other end all in yellow 39 year old Craig Gordon Cup winner with Hearts back in 2006 that was in a penalty shootout he made a crucial save from Derek Townsley will he be called upon to do the same again this afternoon Rangers fans certainly won't hope so Tavernier's caught in possession Barry Mackay plays the ball in field caught by Tavernier and that is a free kick for Hearts and that was uh, that looked a bit dozy actually Alan yeah it does that's what I was just about to say that kind of lax you hope there's not just the tired minds but you need to get the first through the first couple of minutes settle down settle the nerves and then we'll see the best both teams looking to mend broken hearts in terms of cup finals Rangers so recently Wednesday night that devastating defeat against Frankfurt on penalties in the Europa League final hearts having lost this particular final the Scottish Cup final in 2019 and then 2020 Barry Mackay plays the free kick right across the field still shrouded in smoke over on the right it's the Austrian Peter Herring stretches to win a ball commits a foul and gets an early yellow card in this cup final he's caught Calvin Bassey Rangers get the free kick Pat Nevin he was late there um, fair enough Willie Colm had a similar one just the other day in the playoff finals sent a player off and uh, that time he got it utterly and completely wrong this time he gets it right yeah he does gets it right obviously it's just one of those challenges you're trying to put your marker down early doors but this is the last thing you want, a yellow card after three minutes. By the way, nice and sore one, he's down for a while. You better get those kings away, you never got Yeah, let's do that, let's do that, Pat. But that is a worry because we've already discussed this, how good Calvin Bassey was on Wednesday night for Rangers. Playing left back, now being hauled to his feet, he's going to be OK. Pat's giving me my orders, here come your teams. John McLaughlin in goal for Rangers. James Tavernier right back, Calvin Bassey at left back this afternoon. Leon Balogun uh, has come in at centre-back. Borna Barisic out injured, he's alongside Connor Goldson. 
midfield three of John Lundstrom, former Sheffield United man, Stephen Davis, who was in the last Rangers team that won the Scottish Cup back in 2009, and the former Canadian international Scott Arfield scored a crucial equaliser in the semi-final against Celtic on the way for Rangers here. Ahmad Diallo, the 19-year-old Ivorian on loan from Manchester United, on one flank, Ryan Kent on the other, Joe Rebo through the middle. We've done the Rangers team, we'll do the Hearts team in just a second. Flag is up offside free kick Hearts Hearts team Craig Gordon in goal three centre backs John Souter soon to become a Rangers player Craig Halkett recently back from injury Stephen Kingsley who scored a wonder goal in the semi-final win against Hibs wing backs the Australian Nathaniel Atkinson on the left hand side 22 year old Alex Cochran on loan from Brighton an Austrian and an Australian in central midfield Peter Herring and Cameron Devlin Liam Boyce and Barry Mackay former Rangers man in support of Big Ellis Sims who's just jumped to win a header flick the ball onto Boyce Boyce on the turn up to the edge of the Rangers box looking for the one two with Sims ball falls to Sims he hits the shot Bassey gets in the way Rangers clear that's out for a throw in to Hart, Alan Hutton, that was promising from Hart. Yeah, it really was promising. Sims, he's going to do that. He's going to back into defenders. He's going to try and get the, that yard of space to get a shot off. Rangers just look a little bit off it in the first few minutes. They just need to wake it up. Five minutes gone in the Scottish Cup final. Smoke still clearing. League One playoff final underway at Wembley. We'll keep you updated on that one. Sunderland, Wickham, Hearts have taken the throw. They've lost the ball. It's bobbling inside the Rangers half. Wide on the left. Arebo is trying to hold on to it. Hearts get a foot in. The ball is played back uh, towards Craig Halkett, who is the middle of the three centre-backs. And back it comes to Craig Gordon. His first clearance of the afternoon. Left-footed, long downfield. Good leap from Goldson to win the header. Headed sideways by Herring. Liam Boyce tries to get the ball under control. 35 yards from goal. Pass it to the edge of the box. Barry Mackay almost through there. Just stopped in his tracks by Balogun. Ahmad Diallo plays the ball back to Stephen Davis. And Rangers are going to get it clear with Tavernier down the right-hand side. Back into the Hearts half. Let's get a quick update from Wembley early stages. Sunderland Wickham out of Sunderland nil, Wickham nil. Two massive chances for Sunderland. Ross Stewart and Alex Pritchard have both fired wide. Joe Wallace, what a start by Alex Nilsson. Great start from Sunderland. Pritchard hits a free kick, gets it up and over the wall, but not quite inside the post. And what I've thought, the reason they've changed to about four Sunderland so they can get Patchy Roberts exposed 1v1 against JJ. And that's really been that way to the start of the game. Gooch and Roberts are going to be a real threat. They're very dynamic down that right-hand side and they look to be targeting Jacobson. So Obita will have to help him out and give him all the defensive support that he can. Wickham are slowly starting now to slow the game down. And anyone who watched Wickham know how long Stockdale takes when he takes a goal kick. Six minutes gone, Sunderland nil, Wickham nil. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Jed. Do not worry, you won't miss any of the action here. If Aaron and Jed are keeping us updated on the League One playoff final, anything happens here, we're jumping in straight away. Cross comes in from the left-hand side from Arebo. It's blocked. Rangers uh, get the first corner of the game. Hearts have, have made the slightly better start, Pat Nevin. Not a great deal in it, but yeah, as we mentioned beforehand, that's one of the, the things they try to do. Try to get an early lead and put the opposition under pressure. It's just their methodology. They haven't managed to get the early goal this time, um, but certainly Sims has caught the eye with his power and his physique up front of the Hearts. Hearts got off to a flyer in their semi-final against Hibbs. Alan Hutton and I were here for that one. A couple of wonder goals from Sims and then Stephen Kingsley got them 2-0 in front. Front. Seven and a half minutes played. Rangers corner. Rebo makes a run to the near post. Let's the ball go beyond him. It doesn't reach Goldson. Rebo alert though. Gets to the next ball. Heads it down to Ahmad Diallo. Back to Lundstrom here. Here's Ryan Kemp with his right foot. Curling ball into the far post. Slightly miscued header here. So Rangers still have a chance to do something. Goldson's ball into the edge of the box. Might come back to him on the rebound. And eventually nodded out of play by Alex Cochran for a throw into Rangers on the right. Alan. Yes, yeah, it's a half decent play. But one thing I would say, Hart are sitting back in a five defensively and I think Tavernier and Bassey on either side if they can push up they could have big games today Rangers 33 times winners of the Scottish Cup Hearts 8 times winners last time for them was 2012 it was a big one it was a big win over their Edinburgh rivals they won that day by 5 goals to 1 both sets of fans in terrific voice fair play to those Rangers fans as well Rudy Forsyth was telling us ahead of the game some of them just completing their journeys, Pat, back from Seville this morning. Well, some of the BBC people from BBC Scotland have just about go back as well. Um, yeah, no, they made an incredible journey, or an incredible set of journeys, and some of them have been texting me this morning, you know, said the weird ways they had to get back because of some of the flights were cancelled, etc. But they're here, 
and they'll be feeling no pain at the moment. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Tavernier away down the right-hand side, gets to this ball, stands it up to the far post. Hearts have enough men back there to deal with it. Powerful header away. Ball comes out wide on the left-hand side. And it's played back here to Alex Cochran, who's fouled by Tavernier as he clears. So Hearts get a free kick in the left-back position. Alan Hutton. Oh, there's just a little bit of pushing and shoving there going on uh, with Tavernier, but it was a lovely move. I mean, Golton loves that ball in behind that diagonal, and that's what I was saying earlier. There could be space for Tavernier to get on the ball. He actually wanted more from Joe Aribo. He expected him to be there at the penalty spot to have a head on on target, but it wasn't to be. Rangers nil, Hearts nil, Sunderland nil, Wickham nil. Pat Nevin. Do you know, some of what was happening the other night um, is Tavernier kept on making those runs. And I know I'm talking to the experts sitting beside me here. Uh-huh. He was flying up there, time, but the ball was just going too long. Time and time and time again. And people were saying to me, he had a bad game. He was just getting the wrong balls time and again. Liam Boyce, ball might drop him on the edge of the box. Played in here on the angle, scuffs the shot. Sims, oh, he's hit the post. A full stretch, three yards out. Desperate to get a toe on the ball, he did. But he couldn't direct it into the corner of the net. The ball clips the outside of the post and goes behind for a Rangers goal kick. What a chance for Hearts. Should he go with his left foot? I he's going with so. his right foot. I think so he goes with the wrong foot, doesn't he? At the back post, you think if he just throws himself with it, he's going to get there, but... He just gets in behind Bassey. It's, Sims does what he does best, doesn't he? He climbs up, wins the ball. Boyce in behind the, the back four there. And he goes with the wrong foot. Does. And I think if he goes with left foot, I mean, right-footed players tend to do that, but it's going across him. It gives him another couple of inches. To be fair, him getting close to it was impressive. Yeah. When the ball was played in, he was five yards away from it, but he wanted it. Sadly, he wanted it with the wrong foot. If you're a Hearts fan. Been an absolutely fantastic signing for Hearts. 19 appearances for the club since joining on loan from Everton. Just 21 years old. Seven goals in those 19 appearances. The screamer in the semi-final could have had an early one in the final here. At Hamden Park with Pat Nevin and Alan Hutton. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Tavernier has a chance to intercept a a ball inside the Hearts half. Rangers take control of this and Connor Goldson just strokes a pass inside his own half across to Balogun. Calvin Bassey powers forward across the halfway line then leaves that ball to Ryan Kent. He is a real trickster. Dips in from the left-hand side. Looks to poke a ball to Arfield. Arfield on to Stephen Davis. Sliding one through almost to Ahmad Diallo. Here's Kent again. Lays it off on the edge of the box. Bassey's ball in. Aribo jumps. Can't control the ball in mid-air. And it's volleyed away by John Souter. Liam Boyce, barged in the back by Calvin Bassey, doesn't get the free kick, so play continues inside the Hearts half, and here's Kent again, he uses Aribo as a dummy there, brings the ball infield, finds Davis, Davis works it onto his right foot and plays back to Connor Goldson. They play at a different pace them two, Kent gets the ball, he slows it down, he beats the player, gets his head up, we know Davis does that as well, but they are the two players more than anybody else in the field is able to do that today, that may make a big difference for Rangers. 12 minutes played in the Scottish Cup final, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds, Radio 5 Sports Extra has the Spanish Grand Prix qualifying session on right now through until 4 o'clock this afternoon, commentary uh, on the race for you tomorrow as well as the final day of the Premier League season, all the games kicking off at 4 o'clock on air from midday with 5 Live Sport, do not miss a minute of that, here's Bassi strong run down the left, beats two players still going, charges into the area throws himself to the floor looking for a penalty, referee Willie Collum right on the spot, nothing doing goal kick for Hearts uh, I definitely did not see anything wrong with that at all, apart from the fact he went down far too easily and I think the Hearts fans are giving him a piece of their <laughs> the general mind there but it certainly wasn't a penalty kick right early goal at Wembley in the League 1 playoff final Aaron Paul lift off for Sunderland Sunderland 1 Wickham Wanderers nil, and this is a fantastic strike from Elliot Embleton brought into the side today he's driven down the middle of the pitch and he's just let fly at David Stockdale caught the goalkeeper wrong footed and I tell you what he's had an absolute mare the goalkeeper because Embleton's just beaten the, him the sheer pace Jeb Wallace what a strike it was coming Brilliant, it's been coming, they can't get out of their own half, Wickham. Embleton picks it up on the halfway line, drives and just hits one. Loads of power, straight down the middle of the goal. Stockdale's got it all wrong and it's flown in the back of the net. There you go, Ali Sunderland have liftoff. Sunderland won, Wickham wanders now. Thank you, Aaron, shouldn't forget, Scotsman in charge of Sunderland as well. Alex Neal, the manager, there in front early on. Rangers nil, Hearts nil, quickly to Twickenham. Harlequins, Gloucester, early try for Chris Jones. Early try for Gloucester, Ali, Harlequins nil, Gloucester seven, fantastic atmosphere 
over the Quinn span, silenced by the score from Ben Morgan from a trademark Gloucester rolling wall. Hastings converted, 15 gone, Harlequins nil, Gloucester 7. Whatever happens, whenever it happens in the world of sport, you'll hear it here first on Five Live Sport this afternoon. You're not going to miss a minute of this Scottish Cup final either, though. It's been a very even start, 14 minutes gone. Long diagonal out from the back, Ahmad Dalliallo is in behind, into the penalty and rolls that ball across the face of goal. Sliding challenge from John Souter, gets it away for Hearts. Diallo couldn't find a teammate. No, he couldn't, and that was the ball I'm talking about earlier from Connor Goldson into that space, in behind the, I think it's Cochrane. It's a great touch for Diallo, he needs to pick somebody out. I, 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 as a winger, I would say, put it in the area. And you're for a strike or you'd be there. Let me ask you a question. If Morelos was on that field, oh. what would the score be? 1 0. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Robbie Nielsen's already shed the suit jacket. He's in shirt sleeve. Smart white shirt, maroon tie. His defender's trying to deal with Ryan Kent. Gets the ball back to John Lundstrom. Layoff to Stephen Davis. Completely scuffs the ball with his left foot. Comes to our field. Brilliant block on the shot that. That might have been heading for the bottom corner. Craig Gordon was worried for a second. Real pressure building from Rangers at the moment. Ahmad. Back to Davis. Davis spots the run here of Arfield. Loads of space inside the Hearts penalty. Has time to get his head up. Cross takes a deflection. Chance to clear for Herring here. Herring decides to dribble to his left. Low ball out of the penalty area. Barry Mackay with Connor Goldson behind him. Just outnumbered and loses it. Ahmad to Tavernier. Tavernier gets it back from Arfield. Another low cross in. Arebo trying to lay it back to Ahmad again. Boyce is back there doing the defending. Desperate stuff for Hearts at the moment. And eventually they have a chance to come clear. And Ellis Sims finds himself one-on-one -on -one with Balogun shrugs Balogun off the ball now he tries to take him on Balogun gets a foot in and out it goes for a throw into Hearts great defending there by Balogun it's difficult up against Sims you know he's going to back in he's got pace but he stands his ground gets it out for a throw in but Rangers have really just turned up the pressure there in the simplest terms what a great start to a game of football <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> really it's a cup final feels like a cup final it's been played 100 miles on there but there's some good quality out, as well, out there as well hope this keeps on at this rate Pat Nevin and Alan Hutton in situ here at Hampden Park as Bassey on the turn thumps one downfield with his left foot headed away by Halkett released by Rangers as a 19 year old now in the middle of the Hearts defence Liam Boyce is away down the right might want a corner there has he? No, he hasn't. Tried to get the cross in off Bassey, but it's gone straight behind for a goal kick. It's the one thing that Bassey gives you, whether it be centre back or full back, he's got that recovery pace. I mean, he's lightning quick. Yes, he does switch off, but he's got the pace to get him back in there. Goal kick taken short, as Rangers will always try to do. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has kept the suit jacket on. I think he's still got that lovely blooming red flower in the buttonhole of the jacket as well he's sticking his arm out his right arm out to say to Tavernier let's get it moving Tavernier fires one in field doesn't necessarily find its intended target but here's Lundstrom on the ball in his orange boots plays it back to Goldson inside the Rangers half 17 minutes played in the first half of the Scottish Cup final the smoke has finally cleared the flags are still waving and we're still goalless at the moment. Another try at Twickenham, Chris Jones. Cracking game developing here in front of a massive crowd in the Twickenham sunshine. Harlequins have hit right back. Danny Kerr's pass. Alex Dombrant under the post. Marcus Smith couldn't miss with the conversion. 7 all, 22 minutes left of the half. Promising attack developing for Hearts here. Barry Mackay swings a high ball away to the right hand side. The ball is nodded down. Ellis Sims can't get to that knockdown inside the penalty area. Devlin says that's mine for Hearts. All in maroon. Plays the ball back. Not quite enough pace on it, but Hearts still have it. Halkett comes across the halfway line to Kingsley. Immediately ships the ball on down the left. Headed away by Tavernier. And Arfield takes control of it. The Rangers nil nil. We mentioned the fact that it's been played at a really good high tempo pace. I mean, it isn't what you expected from Rangers, really. You know, but they see themselves calmly into this game. It could be a long, you know, 90 through 120 minutes. They don't seem affected too much. They had there was a wee bit, you know, there were some wee mistakes earlier on. But at the moment, nah, they're not hanging off it, are they? No, but I think you've, you've seen Rangers in European competition then going to play Celtic here in the semi-final, going to extra time, and the levels have been so high. So, they've had a good start to this game. The changes made in, in midfield, Pat, may be crucial there. Ryan Jack, Glenn Kamara on the bench. So uh, Stephen Davis, Scotty Arfield will come in there. It's, yeah, they, I mean, those players played but didn't play the 120 minutes all night. And we do remember that. Remember the sight of uh, a number of Rangers players on their backs and on their knees at the end of that game. 
yeah, but it wasn't all of them. Some of them are actually were thinking they wish they'd have got a few more minutes and they may have made the difference. They'll get the minutes here. Certainly will. 19 minutes gone in the first half. Sunderland leading Wickham by a goal to nil at Wembley in the League One playoff final. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. And Hearts have weathered a little storm from Rangers. Rangers have the ball inside their own half. John Ludstrom gets his head down, sees some open space, runs forward 20 yards, is able to calmly roll a pass into the feet of Ryan Kent. Kent on the move, gives it to Arebo, immediately gets it back, knocks it past Cochran here, gets a low ball in, looking for Hamad, intercepted at the near post and headed away. Stephen Davis reads the clearance, nips in to win it for Rangers. Tavernier plays it out to Kent on the right-hand side. Here's Hamad, lays it off to Kent. Good stuff from Rangers. Little flick to the outside of his right boot. Finds Tavernier, cross in, Gordon stretches. Might have been caught by his own defender, John Suter there. Brave goalkeeping, good hands, holds onto the ball. One way traffic down that right-hand side, isn't it? Yeah, it's real good play. It's good link-up with Kent, comes over to this right-hand side, him and Diallo, who work it to Tavernier. And you know he's going to deliver a good ball in, but Craig Gordon smothers it well. You just wonder if they think Hearts have got a weakness in that left-hand side with theirs, or just the fact that that's where Rangers are strongest. Here's Cochrane, tries to knock the ball past Tavernier, goes flying, free kick for Hearts, Tavernier doesn't like the decision, argues it and then trots off and has to go back and defend, Rangers nil, Hearts nil, four o'clock kickoffs on the final day of the Premier League season tomorrow, commentary starts at the Etihad Stadium, Manchester City trying to clinch a fourth Premier League title in five seasons, John Murray and Leon Osman will be at that one, I'm at Anfield for Liverpool Wolves, we'll have commentary on Sports Extra of that game and reporters at all ten Premier League games with so many issues to be decided, going to be a fabulous listen tomorrow afternoon, this has started very promisingly as well, free kick for Hearts, Barry Mackay chips it up, headed across the box. Sims was hoping to smash that on the volley. It's just taken away from him. Ahmad, the 19-year-old, clears with his left foot. Cochrane is back there and plays back to his goalkeeper, Craig Gordon. Rangers are going to have to suss it out a little bit. There's been a couple of uh, free kicks that they've got and twice they've been blocked and they've got a man round. Hearts have got a man round the back. You fall for it once, fair enough. Don't fall for it twice if you see that one coming. Gordon's ball floated downfield, headed away by Goldson. Kingsley on the half volley with his left foot, hoists it forward. Sims will chase it. Goldson's there with an overhead kick away. Boyce with a little header that might find Peter Herring here. Herring has committed a foul, but the advantage is played. And Joe Arebo is able to bring the ball forward for Rangers across the halfway line. Stopped in his tracks by Kingsley. Kingsley. Plays back into the heart of his own defence. John Suter has a bit of space to work with. Runs into the centre circle. Curls the pass away to the left with his right foot. Barry Mackay lobs one over the top through the middle. Boyce can't quite bring it down. Looking for Sims. Bassey's in there. Gets it back to his goalkeeper. And we will bring you an update uh, on the qualifying session at the Spanish Grand Prix. Here's Jack Nichols. Five drivers eliminated. Sebastian Vettel out. Fernando Alonso eliminated at his home Grand Prix. He'll start 17th on the grid. Lance Stroll and then the two Williams of Alex Albon and Nicholas Latifi eliminated. Leclerc was fastest. Now we're moving into Q2 on Sports Extra. Rangers nil, Hearts nil, no goals at Hampden Park. Three tries at Twickenham so far. Chris Jones. Yeah, Gloucester hit right back. Some response to that Don Brandt try. It's a cracker as well from the Cherry and Whites. Brilliant break from Carreras and a peach of a pass to Freddie Clark, who stormed onto it and finished superbly. Hastings converted. Harlequin seven, Gloucester 14. You very rarely get a dull Harlequins game. Chris will keep us updated. Rangers nil, Hearts nil in this Scottish Cup final. Very much to and fro. Here's Bassey, bit of space for Rangers on the left in their light blue, curling ball in, good ball. Arebo trying to lay it off here to Stephen Davis, suddenly just popped up at the near post with loads of space there and Hearts just about get it away. Yeah, they do, but Rangers are working the ball well from wide areas. The, the link-up play is good, but then they're trying to get it to Joe Arebo, hold it up, get bodies round about him, and it's working at the moment. Throwing for Hearts, right back position. You can see one of those giant maroon and white Hearts flags to the right here as Suter launches that down the right flank, headed away by Bassey. Going to be really interesting to watch those Rangers players like Bassey, like Tavernier, who really went through it on Wednesday night, see what they've got as this game goes on and on deeper into the second half. Ball out for the back 
by John Suter for Hearts. Here's Bassey, cool as you like, chests it down, rolls the pass forward down the left, intercepted, one back by Rangers on the left, sliding challenge comes in from Devlin, and that's a throw into Rangers. Pat Nevin. Yeah, just as I said, we're doing well down the right hand side, suddenly Rangers switch it and start hammering down the left hand side. Bassey's looked very good there, desperate to get forward at every opportunity. He's got phenomenal pace. If you've got Kent out there and they can build up an understanding, they're going to be really difficult to stop today. Stephen Davis, 37 years old, cup winner with the Rangers back in 2009, the last time they won the trophy. Defeated in the final by Hibs as a championship team, then Rangers back in 2016. And Tavernier's shot for handball here against Barry Mackay. I think that might only be given as a throw. The ball hit Mackay, has gone out of play. And yes, that will be a throw to Rangers on the right. Tavernier takes it. Stephen Davis, backpedalling, receives it under no pressure. Plays back into the Rangers' half. Songs ringing round Hamden Park. Noise levels go up again. Balogun. Plays the ball to Goldson and the Hearts players just happy to stand off here, hold their ground on the halfway line and then Goldson drills it forward with the diagonal and away to Ryan Kent. Can only head that ball straight up in the air and actually couldn't keep it in play. So that's a throw in for Hearts inside their own half on the right. I think the one thing about Hearts is yes, they are defending and defending in a five, but when they get on the ball, they're looking to go forward quickly and pace and real cause problems in behind. As we know, Sims likes to hold the ball up and they've got that threat of in behind, so they're trying to work that. Sunderland won Wickham nil in the League One playoff final, kicked off at three o'clock at Wembley. There is a 6.06 tonight from uh, six minutes past six, of course with former Scottish Cup winner Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking your calls this evening, obviously looking ahead to the final day of the Premier League season tomorrow. They'll want your reaction to this game as well. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Next break in play, we'll take you back to Wembley. Sunderland last we heard, leading Wickham by goal to nil. Lundstrom with a curling ball, looking to use the pace of Ahmad, tackled by Kingsley. The ball's knocked out for a throw. Ahmad wants to take that quickly, and he does so, and gets it back to Tavernier, who chests the ball down. Rolls it into the path of Ahmad, with his socks rolled down, little red tops to the black sock. Ball into the penalty area. Davis is there, lays it back, curling shot. He's easily saved by Craig Gordon to Wembley, Aaron Paul. Sunderland one, Wickham no, Elliot Embleton strike, who remains the difference to these two sides. Alex Pritchard has had another long range effort held well by David Stockdale in the Wickham goal. Jed Wallace, the Millwall winger, alongside me. Jed, it feels like things are calming down now. Yeah, it's a bit of a low in the game, I think. Furious start by Sunderland. They're probably feeling it, trying to get a little breather within the game, and that's allowing Wickham to get their foot in, in possession for the first time, settle down, and the next goal is going to be vital in this one. Sunderland 1, Wickham 0. Thank you, Aaron. 26 minutes gone in the first half here. Hearts have the ball inside their own half. Played wide to Kingsley. Ahmad Diallo behind him. Gets a foot in, so ooh, Halkett chips a nasty one back to Gordon, has to control it with his head, Arebo's in there to close him down, and Gordon, very cool customer, plays it away with his left foot, but Hart's in trouble again. Ahmad Diallo to Arebo, Arebo back to Davis, Davis finds Arebo again, able to turn on the edge of the Hart's box, finds Kent, good first touch, low shot, rifled wide, and behind for the goal kick, Alan Hutton. But just as well, Craig Gordon's a tall guy, that he could get his head on that, but... Rangers are just up in the pressure, they're working the ball well, especially in wide areas, the, the combination play is so good, but Craig Gordon's a lucky boy, he's that high. Do you know, and the other thing on top of it was nice to see, he didn't then panic when the ball landed there, he just got it in his head, and then a nice little left footed kick out to the left hand side, but uh, I don't think every goalkeeper would thank you for that sort of pass back. <laughs> Hearts of uh, Hearts fans have responded to the uh, the Rangers singing with a choreographed scarf twirl and flag wave away to our right. That's now just stopped for a second. 27 minutes gone in the first half. Alan Hutton and Pat Nevin alongside me at Hampden Park. Rangers nil, Hearts nil, and the ball has gone out for a Rangers throw on the left. Alan. It just shows you what type of game it is that I've just looked up and it's nearly 28 minutes gone. It's absolutely flown by. It is one of those games you want to actually save it a wee bit more than you're going to get, maybe. But looking at uh, Hearts, slow but surely, not dissimilar to a game I mentioned earlier against Celtic. Started really well, really lively, really high up, but they have slowly but surely been pushed, pushed further and further back, and they can't allow it to keep on going, because eventually Rangers will break through. Loud shout from Craig Gordon, who comes rushing out of his area to clear long downfield. Mackay back to Cochrane. Cochrane smashes the ball 
into Goldson's legs, loses a, a boot in the process, so he's going to have to put that back on, but Hearts do get the throw. Played each other last Saturday uh, in the Scottish Premiership, a much-changed Rangers team, won the game by three goals to one, although Hearts took the lead, lovely finish from Alex Herring in that game. Alex Lowry actually, Pat, scored for Rangers in that game. He's an 18-year-old we might get to see later on. Just wonder whether he might even get a start in this cup. I think a lot of us thought that, but uh, I think you'll get Giovanni and Brock because he realised he'll be useful later. Yeah, you know, those legs and those that capability and that skill. Yeah, definitely. It's just his quality. See, for one so young, he plays with his head up, he's very mature, he's easy on the eye, and he's never flustered. So he will be probably seen later on in this game. 18 years old, on the bench for Rangers, throwing for Hearts, delay as Alex Cochran undoes the laces, puts the boot on, does the laces back up again, takes the throw, plays it to the Northern Ireland international Liam Boyce, ball into Ellis Sims, uses that strength to hold off Bassi, stabs it back to the right wing back Nathaniel Atkinson, Herring the Austrian, plays it to Suter, Suter, good powerful run forward, into the feet of Sims again, edge of the Rangers area, rolls it back into Mackay with the curler, it's high and wide and behind for the goal kick, I have seen him score a very, very good goal for Rangers actually actually, uh, in a cup semi-final against Celtic, he couldn't quite get it right that time. John Sutter, by the way, walking up. We've, we've not really actually talked about him a lot. It's quite a story, isn't it, that he's going to be playing for Rangers next season. Um, that's the first time we'll, we've watched him step out of the defence with the ball. He is class when he does that. And uh, ended up with half a chance there. Sims at the moment is holding the ball well, isn't he? Very well. He's a danger. He is a handful. Tavernier leaps. All he could do with that ball was just knee it away inside his own half, and it's gone straight to Peter Herring for Hart. The ball is played wide to Mackay. Mackay's got Tavernier behind him, finds Boyce in a bit of space, chest this down, Bassi's there, Sims hits it on the volley, hits his own man Boyce, and the ball goes bouncing into the middle of the Rangers' half. Four players battle furiously for it, it runs out to the left, here's Mackay who's having more of an influence as this first half goes on, dribbles into the Rangers' box, still going, Ahmad Diallo in with the tackle, brings the ball away for Rangers, lays it back to Tavernier, clears that with his right foot, Kingsley intercepts it, Devlin flicks it to Boyce, Boyce calmly controls it on his right thigh, Arfield clears for Rangers, headed forward, Cochran with a little flick header, Tavernier's got to try and keep that in because that glanced off him, Hearts claim that's a throw, Tavernier got there just in time, and Goldson thumps it downfield with his right foot, Halkett wins the header, Arfield powers a header forward, John Suter is there in the bouncing ball, he nods it back to his goalkeeper Craig Gordon. Much better play from Hearts in that little couple of minutes spell, and Barry Mackay is a great influence when he gets up ahead of steam, he, he can go by players with ease, and I just think we're right Pat earlier on, Sims is a key man, see if they can get the ball up to him and bounce it off him. Great centre forward play from Ellis Sims again, the layoff to Atkinson tries to get the ball back to him, Balogun has the run covered, intercepts and clears with his left foot, high swinging clearance downfield, Suter comes flying across from the right side of that three-man Hearts defence to nod the ball out of play for a Rangers throw, 14 minutes remaining in the first half, still Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Yeah, just talking about Sims up front there, I mean there is a bit of the Dominic calvert learns about him, um, and I also like Dominic, he will get better and better and better. You can see that all the physical attributes are there. It doesn't always last 90 minutes, but in time, two or three years down the line, he's going to be a very, very special player. Fifth Scottish Cup final that's been competed between these two great clubs. Rangers have won three of the previous four. The last one, though, Hearts won back in 1998, which ended up being Ali McCoyce final game for Rangers, free kick for Hearts, one inside their own half, wide on the right, 13 minutes left in the first half, still Rangers nil, Hearts nil. I think someone just wound Ryan Kent up there, I mean we talk about how's our legs going to be feeling, <laughs> you see how fast his legs are moving there? He actually was a little bit too quick for himself because he, he's dragged the two players inside, he made the space, then he made the wrong decision, which some players do, but he rarely does, and it was uh, not his best piece of play, but... He is a talented player and, again, another player that could and should have a, mess, a massive influence in this game. Ellis Sims doing Calvert-Lewin things again, jumping high to win a header. Hearts can't do much with it, the ball's back in their half. Stephen Kingsley just rolls it gently back to Craig Gordon, right on the edge of his penalty area, looks up, drives the ball downfield, Sims 
prodigious leap again to flick it on. Boyce picks this one up on the right-hand side. Back to Herring. Cochran's in a bit of space at the far post. Had his arm up. They couldn't see him. Rangers intercept. Suddenly they're away on the counter. Stephen Davis. That's a clever ball. Finds Arebo on the left-hand side. Two Rangers attackers. Three Hearts defenders. Arebo goes it alone. His shot's blocked by Suter. Herring is there. And Hearts might immediately try and launch a counter here down the right. Atkinson looking for Sims. Sims against Goldson. Goldson had a head start and gets there and plays back to his goalkeeper, John McLaughlin. That's the thing about Steve Davis. He sees things. He sees the picture before it happens. It's a lovely ball through pass into a rebo. Probably just takes a little bit too long. Allows Craig Gordon to come out and narrow the angle, but good bit of play from Rangers. He also does pretty good defending from Suter, wasn't it? That's true. He slowed a rebo down a little bit. Showed him just a little bit wide killed the angle for him. Bassey being invited forward by the Hearts defenders so he doesn't need a second invitation on he goes lays it off to Kent wide on the left Rangers work it back into midfield midway inside the Hearts half just over 10 minutes left in the first half here of the 137th Scottish Cup final Rangers nil Hearts nil Rangers absolutely desperate not to end this season empty handed having won the title last season by 25 points finished four points behind Celtic Kent away down the left Cross deep, Cochrane not taking any risk, nods it behind. That'll be a corner for Rangers. It was nice to see that there. Aaron Ramsey came out to warm up. All the fans were all applauding, standing up. It's nice to see that he's got that back into the sport, and rightly so. Corner then for Rangers. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of Aaron Ramsey later on. I mean, that, that could be an amazing narrative if he, if he comes on and gets the winner. That would be absolutely phenomenal. And the way football goes... I wouldn't surprise him. Yeah, Hearts fans obviously don't want that. Tavernier's corner, delivered at pace, powerfully headed away. Sims will chase it, all on his own inside the Hearts half. Diallo is able to take it off him. Plays it to Kent. Kent with the diagonal. Craig Gordon, too near him, so he comes out at the edge of his six-yard box and makes a very confident catch. So... Make sure, make sure we tell my old manager Craig Brown they caught that one again. That <laughs> he's been catching a lot. Yeah, he has. To be fair, he's not been massively tested yet for all the fact that you know, he's been played at a good pace and you know, impressed with some of the football and getting into really quite dangerous areas. Not really had many good saves or big saves to make and you can say the exactly the same with McLaughlin. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. BBC Radio 5 Live. And the BBC Sounds app. You can listen to us on this afternoon. Ball in the Hearts half. Devlin's won it. Boyce plays it back to Suter. He's got options here. He's right in the middle of his own half. Goes for the high diagonal to the left. Tavernier can't head back to his goalkeeper. Heads it away. Cochran is onto it for Hearts. Trying to get past Diallo. Diallo throws himself in the way of the ball. Blocks it. Goes out for a throw into Hearts on the left-hand side. Attacking position. Level with the Rangers penalty spot. Just going to take their time here and get themselves set. And once we see what Hearts do with this, we'll be back to Twickenham to get the latest on the Harlequins uh, Gloucester game. Cochrane with the ball, held in both hands above his head. And his maroon-shirted teammates start to make runs. Mackay couldn't control it. Cross, though, comes in from Kingsley. Bassey on the floor. Sims has barged into him. That'll be a free kick for Rangers. Chris Jones watching the action at Twickenham. Harlequin 7, Gloucester 21. A third try for Gloucester. Lewis Ludlow did brilliantly. Chris Harris powered over. How crucial a score could that be in the context of Gloucester's season as they hunt the top four? Seven minutes until the break. Harlequin 7, Gloucester 21. Calvin Bassey making ground again down the left for Rangers. Brilliant at centre-back in the Europa League final on Wednesday night. And now looking really good at left-back in the Scottish Cup final this afternoon. Here he is again. Gets the ball from Kent. Crossing a Rebo throws himself at it and doesn't get enough on the header. It goes agonisingly across the face of the Hearts goal and behind for a goal kick. Again, it's lovely play out on that wing. And Bassey, he's just that driving force. He gets round Kent, he gets a good ball into the box. Rebo throws himself at it and it just flashes across the, the goal line. But I, I think it was Halkett that put him under pressure there. I'm not quite sure. It looked like Halkett put him under a lot of pressure and made it difficult for him. Not too dissimilar. There have been two real good chances for both sides. Sims early on didn't quite get in the end of it. Got a touch to it in the post and then that was a good chance there. Just maybe half a yard to I'm not too slow. Half a yard behind it, and otherwise it could have been a goal. Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. 
If you're a golf fan, third round of the US PGA, second men's major of the year is going to be on Radio 5 Sports Extra from 8 o'clock this evening. Final round coverage on 5 Live from 9 o'clock tomorrow. And if you want to have a listen to a couple of podcasts ahead of that action, the All About series at the moment, building up to the 150th Open Championship at St Andrews this summer, uh, is well worth a listen on the BBC Sounds app. The latest one, All About the Open Champion, Colin Morikawa, and his fondness of Post Malone, uh, amongst other things. Our producer, Rob Schofield, just showing me a headline on the BBC Sport website that says, Kylian Mbappe, Paris Saint-Germain forward, agrees in principle to stay with the French champions. More on that in due course, I'm sure. Liam Boyce had a chance to bring it forward for Hart, trod on the ball, then he's gone down in a heap. He was caught as he eventually got the pass away. Alex Cochran's got an arm up. He wants his teammates to stop. Sims is trying to win a foul on the edge of the Rangers box. He's not going to get that one. Boyce is OK. He's picked himself up. But initially, as Boyce was getting away, if he hadn't trodden on the ball, Hearts could have had a really good opportunity there. Yeah, definitely. And I think Boyce, it was an, it was an ankle injury that kept him out, wasn't it? And I think John Lundstrom just caught him there on the ankle as he was stretching for it. So he looked in a little bit uncomfort. Came off after 12 minutes in the defeat against Rangers last weekend but uh, said this afternoon he'd play on one leg if he had to. Seems okay, here's Tavernier on the halfway line for Rangers, under pressure from the Australian Devlin, plays it back to Goldson, the Rangers centre-back across to Balogun Stephen Davis drops in between his two centre-backs to pick up possession inside his own half, moves neatly to his right, finds Goldson with the big long legs, striding forward across the halfway line, Lundstrom Low pass down the inside right channel. Diallo looking to find Tavernier. Cochrane's gone down. Whistle goes late to give the free kick to Hearts. And Tavernier and loads of Rangers fans, as you can hear, not happy with that decision. Oh, he's left a lazy leg in there. It's not nasty, but it's kind of really quite late. Um, I don't think he's badly injured. And I think that's what Tavernier rightly is complaining about. He doesn't think there's a huge amount of pain involved there. And he's absolutely right. Uh, he's absolutely right. He ran into Tavernier's leg and goes over. No wonder the captain's up there and remonstrating with the referee. That's that's poor. I've I've never played professional football, obviously, and I know I couldn't take the knocks and the bumps and bruises. That was feeble. <laughs> yeah. But then I've not seen a lot of that today. You know, it's it's been a quite robust, you know, challenge they're going in. They're not complaining about one or two fouls. Just get on with. That's the first thing. Someone's ridiculously thrown themselves to the ground. 6:06 tonight. I don't think they do simulation game tonight. I think that's on a Sunday night. But I think that might just be a candidate there. Alex Cochran. Young Hearts defender on loan from Brighton. Flick on from Liam Boyce. Very nearly found the run of Ellis Sims. There's definitely threat from Hearts in this game, as there has been from Rangers. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Bassey steaming forward again. Outside of his left foot, finds Kent. First time cross. Rangers appeal for handball on the edge of the box. John Suter had his arm by his side. Play continues. Rangers win the ball back inside the Hearts half. Three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Still Rangers nil, Hearts nil. In this Scottish Cup final, Sunderland leading Wickham by a goal to nil at Wembley, last we heard. Back there shortly, Kent to Bassey. Great ball in! Ahmed Diallo, header over the bar, five yards out, he just couldn't keep it down. He has to score, he has to score. I mean, it's a wonder ball in from Bassey out on the left-hand side, right to the back post. He gets in front of Cochrane and he just heads it over the bar. He's only, what, five yards out? That's the top, he said, he needs to get over it. That needs to be a goal. Um, winger, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. point. Winger's at the back post. Not, a, not always renowned for it, and you're right. He's got to put his forehead on that. It's a goal. What a ball. Just watching the um, the replay of the... I mean, that did that did hit his arm. It was by his side. John Suter there, the ball from right end. Now then, Ellis Sims has the ball for Hearts up at the other end. Blue shirts in front of him, rolls it to his right, Atkinson's cross, that's blocked, and goes behind for a corner to Hearts. We'll see the corner, then we'll head to Wembley, that'll be approaching half-time as well, the League One playoff final. What a chance for Ahmad Diallo here, Ellis Sims has hit the post as well, Joe Arebo has gone close with a header for Rangers, but we're still at Rangers nil, Hearts nil, and Barry Mackay is taking his time, former Rangers player, so I don't think he'll be getting any stick over there in front of the Rangers fans. He's tucked the ball under his right arm. He's going to place it very carefully on the edge of the quadrant under the watchful eye of the assistant referee. 
Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Holds his left arm in the air. It's an away swinger. It's a low one. Stephen Davis is there. Hoist the clearance high in the air. Devlin battling with Kent, the two number 14s. Davis smashes a clearance downfield. Diallo is onto it for Rangers. Rolls it back to Arebo, and Hearts are trying to get back quickly to plug a few gaps here. Arebo on the left-hand side. Ryan Kent gives him the shout. Skips away down the left. Atkinson gets a challenge in, and the ball goes out for a throw in to Rangers. Attacking position wide left. Yeah, it's just went up a notch into it. It's just, as Pat said earlier, 100 mile an hour stuff, 43 minutes in the clock. But Rangers look really dangerous from wide areas. Whether it be Tavernier getting down the right or Bassett getting down the left, the link up with Kent has been excellent, and that's where all the creative spark is coming from. 90 seconds remaining in the first half. Back to Wembley shortly, throwing for Rangers on the left, about 10 yards short of the byline. Bassey looking for a runner. Kent comes towards him. His tackle goes out for another throw in. Replacement ball immediately put in the arms of Bassey, takes the throw, finds Arfield. Plays it back to Arfield on the left and Rangers decide to come out and rebuild again all the way back to the halfway line. Here's Balogun, closed down by Liam Boyce for Hearts. Lundstrom opens his body up and side foots the first time ball to Davis. Davis with a little give and go here, but Kent doesn't give it back. Plays it to Bassey. Bassey's curling ball into the Hearts penalty area. Comes straight through to Craig Gordon. Pat Nevin. Yeah, it's a shame that because um, the build-up play, the concentration, the way they were holding it, the way they were dragging Hearts players away, but that was a poor final ball in there maybe one of the first bits of tiredness that you've probably seen in the game so far I've not seen much of that it's been a lively tempo really well held up by Rangers and they, they have had most of it but they're not completely dominant and that'll give the hearts a little bit of hope for the second half Ellis Sims has a swing at the ball 40 yards from the Rangers goal didn't make contact Ahmad Diallo is down he's told to get up by the referee Hearts have it with Kingsley, Kingsley whips the ball down the inside left channel, Sims chases, Goldson's there first, heads it forward to Tavernier, no added time at the end of the first half, entertaining stuff but no goals, Ellis Sims struck the outside of a post early on, Arebo flicked ahead of wide, Ahmad Diallo, Alan Hutton late in that half, should have scored for Rangers. Yeah, he definitely should have scored but we need to talk about the ball from Bassey, that's quality streets, right down there, he gets good movement away from Cochran into the back post, he just dips his head down, it hits the top of his head, goes up and over the bar, but really unlucky. Thunderball from Bassey, would you say Pat? Uh, yeah, do you know what, I've, there's, a, there's a whole load of things about this game you could talk about, but Alan's absolutely spot on with, it, with the, the way that they're getting down the left hand side, right hand side earlier on, left hand side in, in the second part of the first half, hammering balls in that, those sort of areas and getting behind the three centre backs because they're, because they're playing with a back three hearts it sometimes leaves that little bit of a gap in there and that's what they're trying to do but right at this moment it's very difficult to see where the biggest dangers are I have to say I think Liam Boyce is a really really good first half every time just about he's got the ball he's done good things with it and we know that Sims is the danger the problem with Sims is runs out of gas he needs to do something in the next 20 minutes or else he may run out of time Great atmosphere, entertaining game, no goals. Scottish Cup final at half-time, Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Steve? Craig Gordon, the uh, the last man to leave the pitch down into the dressing room below us. We talked so much about him before the game, Alan Hutton. His most difficult piece of work was a bad back pass. Yeah, that's what we were just saying. Just as well, he's so tall, he's about six foot three, six foot four, and he managed to get up there and head, but he was so calm under pressure. But that's what you expect from a guy with that sort of experience. But been a really good game at flown by that was a honestly that 45 minutes went by in a flash so really expecting the same in the second half but hopefully some goals one of the things that you find when I was at the Scottish Cup final this week and the English Cup final last week and although there's real quality down there um, see when you watch this game there's so many players that want to break the lines there's so many players it's not pass 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 and somebody eventually thinks well I'll try and beat someone in this game, there's so many guys on both sides that say, I'm going to take on my, my defender here. I'm going to try and get beyond them. And that's what's making it such an exciting 45 minutes. So, no, we've not had any goals and didn't have any goals in either cup final so far. But it hasn't made it a dull game, it's made it a good game. Two takeaways that I've had, Roddy, in that first half. Ellis Sims is going to be a very good player. And Calvin Bassey is something else. Sims, interestingly enough, that's the only shot on target from either side, which I find it remarkable. I was looking at the clock just as Alan Hutton said, this game has flown by so quickly I can't believe the time that it's gone. The one thing I do feel about Rangers, 
they look like a team without a natural striker and they are a team without a natural striker so my question is will they bring on Kemar Roof at the hour mark perhaps I would sacrifice Diallo probably for that move very go wide that would be my guess to what's going to happen Steve it's always our job to paint pictures I've never seen Roddy in this hat before so the, the <laughs> RF is the Roger Federer symbol but it works perfectly doesn't it the baseball cap the RF Roddy Forsyth he stole it from you Roddy I'll just draw a C on it later. R A D. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> At least it feels in the like Rangers section here. Yeah. <laughs> this definitely feels like the right time to take you back to Wembley, where it's half time. Aaron Paul. Sunderland one, Wickham one, draws nil. A cracking strike from Elliot Embleton is the difference between these two sides, and it is a deserved lead for Sunderland, who started fast and attack relentlessly. Alex Pritchard fired a free kick into the side netting early on, whilst Ross Stewart couldn't get any purchase on a shot at the back post, but it was Embleton who showed them how to do it dancing down the middle of the pitch before finding David Stockdale flat-footed in the Wickham goal the ball just flew past the chair boys goalkeeper and Wickham they've not really had much of a response their majority of their attacking intent has come aerially but nothing Sam Vokes can do uh, to beat Danny Bat and Bailey right at the heart of the Sunderland defence the middle winger Jed Wallace alongside me for this one Jed what do Wickham need to do in that second half? Uh, more of the same, they've settled into the game, they've managed to get some territory into the Sunderland defensive third, Vokes has been a bit isolated at times, and anyone that watches Wickham knows of the quality that Jacobson has, so the more set plays they can get in this half, and he can get his left wand on top of it, they're, they're fans of themselves from set plays and get some more support around Vokes. There you have it Steve, that's the tale of the first half, Sunderland with the advantage, they lead Wickham Wanderers by goal to nil. Thank you very much guys, I've uh, just seen one of the greatest signs in the world, the happy world of Aribo. Joe Aribo, top stuff from the Rangers fans there. Right, let's take you back to Birmingham. Keely Hodgkinson going in the 800 metres. Alison Kerbishley and James Ellington with Katie Smith. And they've just set off Steve Keely Hodgkinson, as you say, the Olympic silver medalist for Great Britain, had a minor injury in the indoor season, which saw her miss out on the world indoors. So we are watching her run for the first time in a couple of months. The question is, what sort of form is she going to be in ahead of this very busy season? The athletes start in their lanes then after 150 metres, tuck into the inside of the track. And Keely Hodgkinson is leading the pack at the moment, the pacemaker out in front of of her just setting off uh, a nice steady pace for these athletes who are going to complete two laps of the track in the Alexander Stadium as they come into the home straight for the first time. Kodjkinson leading. You could throw a blanket over these athletes. Natoya Ghoul, her greatest challenger perhaps in this field of Jamaica, just sitting behind her, an Olympic finalist as well. Alex Bell in there for Great Britain, sitting in fourth place, but it's Hodgkinson who leads at the 400 meter mark. Yeah, slower than they'd asked for, but Keely Hodgkinson's looking really in control, Katie. She's just now leading the field as the pacemaker steps aside. Natalia Gull, a finalist in Tokyo, well down behind Keely Hodgkinson in that final, is sitting right on her shoulder, but Keely looks really in control here. She's going to start winding the pace up. Lamotte from France in third place. 250 metres left to run. They're halfway down the back straight. The roar of the crowd for Hodgkinson, who is still holding off Ghoul on her outside, on her shoulder. The other athletes in a pack behind, just closing things up again. But Hodgkinson running from the front. We know she likes to do that with 150 metres left to go then. And Hodgkinson starting to wind things up. Ghoul dropping back slightly now. Hodgkinson has clear track around her. And Hodgkinson charging down the home straight. 80 metres to go. Lamotte finishing quickly, she's going to overtake Ghoul the Jamaican, but it's all about Hodgkinson here. They gave this the finale race of the Birmingham Diamond League, all for this very special 20-year-old Keely Hodgkinson, who comes home in a time of 1 minute 58.64 seconds unofficially. And Alison, wow, if we had any questions over form, that has answered that. Absolutely. You know, this, this girl is the star of British athletics right now, and quite rightly she is ending all individual uh, events here we've got two relays left to come and of course they saved the best for last and Keeley did not disappoint still only 20 years old yes there is a name of Athing Mo the Olympic champion who she is going to battle her whole career against but right now we can celebrate somebody that's just gone fourth on the world list this year she will be slightly disappointed she hasn't finished that heading the world list but a very impressive run
A very impressive run indeed. So that rounds things off here on the track in the individual events. We've got some relays coming up, some big names going in those as well for Great Britain. The likes of Dina Asher-Smith, the Adam Jamili. But what a way to finish things off. Or Steve, I should say, set things up for the summer ahead. What a run from 20-year-old Olympic silver medalist Keely Hodgkinson there in the women's 800 metres. Thank you very much, guys. That was a great day. Keely Hodkinson, Laura Muir, Dina Asher-Smith, all victorious at the Diamond League. We are at some of the great British sporting venues this afternoon. We've been in Birmingham. We're at Wembley, where Sunderland lead Wickham by a goal to nil at halftime in the League One playoff final. We're here at Hampden, where it's Hearts nil, Rangers nil at halftime in the Scottish Cup final. And we're at Twickenham too. Chris Jones. We're at halftime, Steve. Harlequin 7, Gloucester 24. It's a beautiful, dry day here at the home of English rugby, 50,000 at Twickenham, and with the champions Harlequins in action, it's no surprise it's been highly entertaining stuff. But it's Gloucester who need a win to keep up their playoff hopes, who have a real foothold in this game at the break. They've outscored Quins by three tries to one. Ben Morgan, Freddie Clark, Chris Harris all scoring. Second row Clark's been especially good, while Adam Hastings has kicked his goals and popped over a neat drop goal too. Just the Alex Dombrandt try for the champions. They are the kings of the comeback and they will need another one in this second half. Remember, their top four place is still not yet quite locked in. Harlequin 7, Gloucester 24 half-time. Also half-time at the Rec Bar, 14, London Irish 17, while Leicester lead 10 points to nil at Newcastle. A couple of other stories for you. Kylian Mbappe has agreed in principle to stay at Paris Saint-Germain despite being heavily linked with a move to Real Madrid. They type, tried really hard to get him. Kevin De Bruyne has been voted the Premier League's Player of the Season. Uh, Manchester City teammate Phil Foden has been named Best Young Player. In rugby, Catalan Dragons have come back to beat Hull KR 20 points to 8. Uh, that's a third Super League defeat in a row for Hull KR. Uh, we'll have more on F1 qualifying, which you can listen to right now on 5 Sports Extra. And then the second half here at Hamden after the news with Stuart Clarkson. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon. The Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has admitted defeat in the country's general election. Votes are still being counted, but his Liberal Party is behind its main rival, Labour, which appears to have fallen short of an overall majority. It's unclear if the Labour leader, Anthony Albanese, will seek to form a coalition or rule as a minority government. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says that only a diplomatic breakthrough rather than an outright military victory can can end the Russian invasion of his country. He said Ukraine had broken the backbone of one of the world's strongest armies and that the Russians wouldn't recover for several years. Labour has said it's questioning the independence of the imminent Sue Gray report on breaches of lockdown rules in Whitehall. He wants to know why the civil servant met Boris Johnson a few weeks ago to ensure that he hasn't put any pressure on her. And a stand has collapsed while people were watching rehearsals for the Trooping the Colour Parade to mark the Queen's official birthday next month. Two people have been taken to hospital hospital three others were treated at the scene this is five live sport with steve crossman second half commentary on the way here at hamden rangers nil hearts nil in the scottish cup final uh, let's take you back now to f1 qualifying for the barcelona grand prix mark Priestley, jenny gow and jack nichols thank you steve we've got two minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock the drivers have done one lap already and now they're just on track to do their final attempt at taking pole position. Max Verstappen at the moment is on provisional pole position. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari is second. Sergio Perez is third in the Red Bull. The two Mercedes of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton are fourth and fifth. Valtteri Bottas is sixth in the Aston Martin. Daniel Ricciardo, Kevin Magnussen and Mick Schumacher are the top nine. The championship leader, Charles Leclerc, is tenth at the moment because he made a mistake and spun on his first qualifying lap so he Mark Priestley has to get the job done on this lap it's, it's really all or does. nothing if he wants to be at the top yeah two minutes to go he'll only get this one shot he's come out of the pits on a brand new set of tyres so this is everything he's got every opportunity here but the pressure is enormous and he's one of the first or in fact he will be the first to set a, lie, a, a lap time so yeah all eyes on Leclerc right now Leclerc across the line then Jenny down towards turn one 
Yeah, worth remembering that 28 of the last 31 races have been won from the front row and 71% from pole. So the battle right now is so crucial. Leclerc starts his lap, comes through the quick right-hander at turn one, left at two, right again at three, and we'll see how he's doing compared to Max Verstappen in the first third of the lap. The answer is he's only two hundredths away. That's a reasonable start to the lap for Charles Leclerc. Sainz is starting his flying lap now, coming through the first few corners. Hamilton across the line to see what he can do. The Mercedes looking much improved this weekend, but still a little bit of a drift of the front runners. Carlos Sainz is two tenths down on Verstappen in sector one, so he's not actually flying the home hero. Leclerc is. He's now coming through the middle part of the lap, and compared to Max Verstappen, two thirds of the way around, he is up by a quarter of a second. Oh, look at that. Charles Very Leclerc quick. is putting in a huge lap here, but Verstappen is just starting his own lap, coming down towards the first corner. Wow, coming towards the end of the lap then, Charles Leclerc, fastest of anybody in the middle sector, just closing out the last few tight and twisty corners of 14 and 15, the chicane, where he spun just a few moments earlier on, he's Verstappen. And have no power. Verstappen saying he has no power, he's got a problem with the car, and Leclerc hits pole by three tenths of a second, a one minute 18.750, can anybody out there stop him? Carlos Sainz, the Spaniard at his home Grand Prix, comes through the final turn, he can't beat his teammate and he can't beat Verstappen. Verstappen isn't improving. Verstappen will not take pole position for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's only up to the Mercedes now and Hamilton is not close enough. Russell is a quarter of a second away after the middle sector. Hamilton goes fifth. Russell here might be able to get up onto the front two rows of the grid. Kevin Magnussen goes seventh. Sergio Perez in the Red Bull comes across the line and he remains in fourth position. So the only driver now that can stop Charles Leclerc is George Russell in the Mercedes. He's surely going to be too far away, but it might be his best qualifying performance of the season. Russell across the line. It's fourth for the Mercedes driver. Charles Leclerc, the championship leader, made a huge mistake at the start of qualifying, but he has rectified it with a huge lap to take pole for the Spanish Grand Prix tomorrow afternoon. Max Verstappen, with reliability problems once again by the sounds of it, will be second on the grid, doesn't even get to do a second lap. Third on the grid, Carlos Sainz. Fourth for George Russell. And that is the celebrations for Charles Leclerc on the radio. He'll start at the front of the Grand Prix tomorrow, Steve. Thank you very much indeed, guys. Great timing. The teams are just coming out for the second half. Uh, the Rangers fans have let go some red, white and blue flares away to the left-hand side, which is something we seem to see week in, week out when it comes to the back end of the season. But the fireworks on the pitch are the ones we want to see. And the first half suggests we might have a lot to enjoy. Roddy Forsyth. Pat Nevin, Alan Hutton are all with Ali Bruce Ball. Thank you, Steve. Just to add to the enjoyment as well, Hearts in this second half in their all maroon kit with the white trim, white numbers on the backs will attack towards their fan stationed behind the goal to our right-hand side. And Rangers in the light blue shirts, gold numbers on their backs, white shorts and black socks with the red tops will attack towards their fans uh, away to our left. But as you said, Steve, that is the, uh, the thickest smoke that we have seen so far this afternoon. Red, white and blue smoke pouring uh, across the field, although there is so much space between the back of that goal and the stands. Fortunately, it is rising. It's having a chance to rise and sort of get up above the pitch, so it's not affecting the play, and we're back underway. Neither manager's made a change at half-time. I'm sure Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has a plan this afternoon for who's going to get out there later on in the game after 120 gruelling minutes and the penalty shootout in the searing heat of Seville uh, on Wednesday night. But John McLaughlin's the goalkeeper. Tavernier, Goldson, Balogun and Bassi. Calvin Bassi at left-back this afternoon. Lundstrom, Davis and Arfield as the midfield three. Uh, Diallo and Kent, the wide men, with Joe Aribo uh, through the middle. Hearts have Craig Gordon in goal. John Souter, Craig Halkett, Stephen Kingsley as their three centre-backs. Nathaniel Atkinson and Alex Cochran as the wing-backs. Herring and Devlin, the two central midfielders, with Liam Boyce and Barry Mackay in support of 21-year-old Ellis Sims. Rangers trying to build something down the left here. Kent stretched to keep the ball in play. He's on the move again. Bassey releases him. Cross comes in. Gordon thought about going. It's beyond Diallo and Cochran has to head it behind for an early Rangers corner in the second half. Again, start off well down this left-hand side, Bassey and Kent linking up well. 
it's on his left hand side so it's more of a floated cross Diallo's never going to get there with the head what a chance Diallo had late in the first half Bassi found him with that cross and he couldn't convert you could see Craig Gordon was just worried for a second there as the cross came in he knew he couldn't get there corner in now from Tavernier and away swinger ball drops on the edge of the Hearts box chested down by Kent one touch floats another cross into the area header is powerfully flicked away and Stephen Davis goes sprinting back towards the halfway line to get it for Rangers smells like bonfire night uh, inside Hampden Park on this May afternoon, Scottish Cup final, five live and BBC Sounds, Football Daily podcast there for you seven days a week. All the reaction to today's games, League One playoff final, three o'clock kickoff as well this afternoon. Sunderland leading Wickham by a goal to nil and build up in that Football Daily, of course, for the final day of the Premier League season, which takes place tomorrow. Good start to the second half from Rangers. Here's Kent, tricks the ball back onto his right foot. Passes to Bassi. Bassi looks for the 1-2 with Lundstrom. Gets the return ball. Low cross. Intercepted by Suter. Behind for another Rangers corner. Pat Nevin. It's just the ease in which Rangers get to the byline or get into positions. In pure pace they've got. And they've got some skill as well. But it is left and it is right. And it's not hard for them. Little 1-2 and you know they're going to get a cross in. Hearts coming into this game on the back of three straight defeats in the Scottish Premiership. 4-1 at Celtic. 2-1 at Motherwell. 3-1 against Rangers last weekend. Diallo's low corner, skidding into the box. Arebo throws himself at it. Last touch comes from a Hearts player, says the referee's changed his mind. Goal kick. Well, he got it wrong first time and finally figured it out. I don't know where he got the information from, but he definitely gave a corner and then changed his mind. But it, it was it was definitely a goal kick. Yeah, definitely, but it's, it's a poor ball. And that's a couple yeah. from Diallo. One in, I think, in the first half and this one in the second normally Tavernier takes him I don't know why they've decided to change it but it's not been good enough from corner kicks Diallo's the 19 year old Ivorian on loan from Manchester United he joined United from Atalanta uh, not last January but the January before has made nine appearances for United remember him scoring a goal actually against AC Milan here on loan at Rangers starting in the cup final it's nil-nil four minutes gone in the second half Throw in for Rangers in their left back position. Calvin Bassey steals a few yards, goes skipping up the touchline, throws it forward. Suter volleys it away. Suter playing in the maroon colours of Hearts this afternoon, but next season will be in the in the colours of Rangers. It's good to see him back. Actually, he's a player that when he broke through, he was on about 16, and you thought massive things were going to happen. I'm not saying he lost his way, but he wasn't quite the player that we thought he was right away. Referee, is he going to go for his yellow card here? No, he's changed his mind. But uh, certainly he's a player who's now important for Hearts, will be for Rangers, and is also for Scotland. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I, I think, obviously, the serious injuries, I think it was knee injuries, I've done both of them. So he was out for a couple of seasons also. Free kick Hearts, Liam Boyce barged into by Calvin Bassey. It's, uh, it's about 20 yards inside the Rangers' half, seven or eight yards in from the right flank. Mackay with the diagonal floated ball to the far post. Kingsley jumps for it. Arebo's going to get to the loose ball first in the right back position for Rangers. Curls a pass down the touchline, can't keep it in play. And so Hearts all of a sudden on the front foot early in this second half. Robbie Nielsen, their manager, is pacing with his hands behind his back, scored a penalty in the 2006 Cup final win. Craig Gordon was his goalkeeper that day, teammate of his. He's now the manager. Craig Gordon still out there goalkeeping, standing on the edge of his own penalty area. Cochrane's ball infield, intercepted. Ryan Kent onto it for Rangers inside his own half, wide to Bassey. Bassey wants to take Atkinson on on the outside. Atkinson gets a foot in, fouls Bassey, free kick for Rangers. He's an absolute powerhouse. He has one thought in his mind, and that's to take him on. He knocks it by Atkinson, and he does bring him down. It is a foul, but Bassey has been excellent down this left-hand side. He just carried on from Wednesday night. Previously at Leicester, Calvin Bassey. This is second season with Rangers, part of the title-winning squad last season. And I'm sure you will have heard him on Wednesday night. Pat was there in Seville alongside Ian Dennis, possibly watched some of that final as well. Very, very impressive. Rangers on the ball. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. And it's Balogun who's being invited again by Hearts to bring it forward. Drifts to his left, finds Bassey. Two maroon-shirted defenders in front of him. Gets the skill to get past Atkinson. Little back heel to himself, still going. Cross eventually blocked by Atkinson. Mackay tries to chip one down the line. Kent blocks it, throw in for Hearts. Now, that, that shouldn't really be allowed. He's a left back. 
You're not allowed to do three drag backs in a row if you're a left back. That's quality. I thought it was Ronaldinho there for a wee <laughs> second there on the left hand side. That's real, real quality. And he's showing everything. I think he's a player playing with fantastic confidence just now. He's got the pace. He knows he can run past anyone in that Hearts team. Oh. But, you know, those little drag backs and flicks are brilliant. That was, a, that was a little Zidane pirouette, wasn't it, on the ball? And then the sort of right foot behind the left foot to flick it behind him. Oh, is that a you, Pat? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to trip myself up there. <laughs> Seven minutes got in the second half. Booming noise inside Hamden Park on Five Live and BBC Sound. Sunderland leading Wickham by a goal to nil. Ball forward to Stephen Davis inside the Hearts box. Tries a back heel of his own. Diallo gets there too late. Kingsley clears it with his left foot for Hearts. Out for a throw in. Tavernier's there quickly. Throws it to Lundstrom. Gets the ball straight back. Here's Davis with his back to the Hearts goal. Wide on the right. Diallo's with him. Diallo to Tavernier. Tavernier just holds it up, back to Lundstrom, and it goes wide again to Stephen Davis, the 37-year-old. 39-year-old Craig Gordon in goal, 37-year-old Stephen Davis in central midfield for Rangers. Diallo's cross into the near post, Tavernier leaps, headed away, Arfield tries to bring it down on the edge of the box. Peter Herring clears with his right foot, could turn into a very good ball for Ellis Sims. McLaughlin decided late to come for that, eventually, all in bright orange, the Rangers keeper gets there, he's wide on the right, chips the ball down the right towards Tavernier, who can't keep it in, throwing for Hearts. He'd done well there, but I think, see, because they just wet the grass at half time, it just skidded off and allowed them to come out and collect that ball, but if it was dry, it would have held up. Yeah, and he actually made to come out, then stop, then made to come out again, then stop, and then made the final decision decision as long as you get it right in the end but uh, yeah that's just one moment yeah if they put it over the top Sims has got phenomenal pace but couldn't quite go on to the end of it there Sims heads the ball back into the Hearts midfield Herring tries to get it back to him claims he was fouled the ball gets away from him no free kick given it's with John McLaughlin the Rangers keeper again he's got time to play it to Balogun Stephen Davis wants it and gets it from Balogun comes scampering forward up to the halfway line low curling pass to Ryan Kent it's behind Kent reacts too late skids off his studs and out for a throw to Hearts inside their own half Rangers nil Hearts nil Alan Hutton yeah I mean it just needs to be in front of him there Ryan Kent's got one thought in his mind is to go in behind and it's working Davis just plays it in behind him it's not a great ball but they're working the ball well out in this wide area there's good combination play and they've been looking to carry that on in the second half throw in from Suter headed away by Bassey controlled by the Hearts boss Robbie Nielsen semi-controlled <laughs> <laughs> Ball clear, gets away. Clear. Ball's better than that was controlled. <laughs> Not like him. Ball gets away from him off his shiny brogue in the technical area. Suter takes the throw. Robbie Nielsen hides the embarrassment as he shouts instructions across the field. Liam Boyce trying to get Atkinson away down the right. Hearts uh, win another throw. Attacking position on the right-hand side. Taking you to Wembley shortly in our next break in play. Atkinson, the Australian who is hoping he's got a couple of World Cup playoff games on the way for his country. Suter's cross into the edge of the box. Ball is pinging around just outside the Rangers area. All of a sudden, it's four on four for Rangers as they come forward. Diallo stopped in his tracks by Kingsley. Davis plays it forward. Diallo chases. Gordon is there and gets the ball on the edge of his penalty area. Right to Wembley. Here's Aaron Paul. Sunderland won Wickham. No humongous chance for Sunderland to double their advantage. Alex Pritchard on the far side, twisting and turning up against the fullback. Sent a delicious cross to the back post. There was Ross Stewart you would have put your mortgage on him scoring but guess what he's planted his head at just wide Jed Wallace very quickly he has to score those great in swing and delivery from Pritchard he's been pulling the strings all afternoon Stewart does everything right hang time and just pits it a yard wide of the far post Wickham about to make a change they're uh, one down here to Sunderland thanks Aaron scary moments while we were away for Hearts Craig Gordon again dealt with the situation well ball at his feet inside his penalty area was closed down by Arebo got his pass away to Halkett who cleared it just in time but Gordon was very nearly caught in possession there let's be fair he's pretending his heart rate didn't go up there his heart rate did go up there for a second there was no doubt about that he ended up getting the ball away with his left foot but that was tight if he'd had a Robbie Nielsen touch he would have been in trouble Pat <laughs> a Robbie the great touch so just just then well, not when he's got brogues on I that's, suspect sorry I meant just then not in his career obviously Kent with the tackle on Devlin the ball's out for a heart throw on the right by the way just listening to Aaron Paul's voice if you have a listen to the latest fantasy 606 podcast so final day of the Premier League season tomorrow our game week 38 preview is in it it's available on the BBC Sounds app Aaron and I shared an epic Sutton death battle 
on FA Cup and League Cup winning managers since 1993. Have a think about those while you're uh, listening to the game uh, at home and go and find it on the Fantasy 606 podcast as Herring plays a ball across the halfway line to Stephen Kingsley, who scored that wonder second goal for Hearts in the semi-final game against Hibs a few weeks back. Kingsley's making a run down the left. Goldson's been dragged out with him. Kingsley tries to get the cross beyond him and it goes behind in the end for a goal kick to Rangers. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Do you know I'm watching it from about 50 yards away here and I can see the referee's got that right but every single Hearts fan <laughs> complained about it. They're right beside it. It's clearly the correct decision. Pat, you know fans, they're always going to do that. That's, that's part of football, isn't it? Just yeah. noise another team up. <laughs> but they've kept going the whole fan. Both sets of fans all the way through here have kept this lively. You know, they've taken it in turns a little bit. Problem for Hearts, they've not really had that much to go in this centre mm. for nearly 15 uh, minutes into it and they've not had a huge amount to go at. Just wondering if either manager is now contemplating changes because we're approaching that hour mark in the game. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Sunderland leading Wickham by a goal to nil. Alex Neil trying to get Sunderland back into the championship. Wickham having been relegated last season, trying to bounce back at the first attempt. Lundstrom to Diallo. Diallo looks for the ball over the top. Kemp might be in here. Good first touch. Gordon comes out, saves at his feet. Fabulous save by the Hearts goalkeeper. We knew there would be at least one in this cup final this afternoon. That was a crucial one. Do you know what? It was a great ball from Diallo. And we, I know it was a decent touch, but I think if it's slightly better, he has more time on the ball. But... Fair play Gordon, he's out in a flash, that's what he does well, he comes out, spreads himself and there's no way around him. There's a lot of them and that big yellow jersey coming towards you, that has a right in the first touch, so well done him. That's a foul, Diallo on Liam Boyce, Boyce is hurt, he stays down but the advantage is played. Cochrane tries to kill the ball in with his left foot, first yellow card of the cup final coming for Ahmad Diallo. Hearts fans roar their approval. The concern is that Liam Boyce is down. While he recovers from that, let's head to Twickenham. Harlequins against Gloucester being watched by Chris Jones. Well, Harlequins had to score first in this second half, Ali, and they have. Danny Kerr's break took them deep into the Gloucester 22, and then Kerr's little kick was gathered by Joe Marchin, who scored. Marcus Smith converted it to 10-point ball game. Harlequins 14, Gloucester 24, half an hour to go. Liam Boyce still down for Hearts. You were very impressed with him in the first half weren't you Pat in this game so far boys he's just a, such a clever player you know when he holds the ball up well you know he's seen the pictures as well as anybody else in that Hearts team but there's no doubt I, he is he is playing with a little bit of injury isn't he yeah and, and we spoke about it before it's a, it's a Scottish Cup final you're going to run through a brick wall for your team so fair play from being out there giving all I don't think it was a particularly bad tackle there but any sort of tweak or twinge on his ankle seems to have, have an effect on him. Yeah, talking about doing anything to play in the final, Rangers fan but Hearts player Andy Halliday on the bench for Hearts this afternoon as Arfield takes control of the ball just outside his own penalty area, rolls it back to Tavernier, Tavernier clears, Stephen Davis lets it go to play for a Rangers throw was asked whether he'd have any problem in sort of beating Rangers in a cup final and he said he, he gave it the old classic I kick my ground I'd do anything uh, to get to that Scottish Cup so we'll wait and see if he's involved later on this afternoon scored a very famous goal that I saw once actually 2015 scored for Bradford when Bradford knocked Chelsea out of the FA Cup in that fourth round tie I remember Joseph, that yeah, game well yeah. Yeah, yeah. here's Davis Coming forward for Rangers to Arfield. Nicely worked by Rangers. Wide to Tavernier. Tavernier space to work with. Makes about 20 yards. Finds Diallo. Shoved over by Cochran. Doesn't get the decision. He is furious. And he's screaming at the referee. Having just been booked himself. Then goes flying in to a challenge. Now he's got to be careful. He's on a yellow card. Is Ahmad Diallo. The referee's going to have to sort this out. I would suggest if he survives this moment, get him off the pitch. Yeah. Absolutely. He started shouting and bowling. You can get a yellow card for that, can you? Yeah, you can. But in all fairness, it's a two-hand shove yeah. to the ground. So for me, it's a foul originally. But what he then does is he loses his head and he chases after the ball and jumps into a tackle. The red mist comes down. So he's already been booked. He needs to be careful. Yeah. And he misses the ball when he goes in there. Fortunately, he misses the player as well. But well, if you went down to 10 men, that's all Rangers would need just now after what they've been through. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Rangers have won a free kick. Ryan Kent fouled inside his own half wide on the left. Scott Wright, I think, <laughs> looks like he's getting ready <laughs> to come The manager on. may have agreed with my point there. Yeah, I think he heard you. <laughs> I think he heard you. He's listening to you down there. Tavernier 
making ground down the right inside the Hearts half. Arebo stretches to control a pass, falls over, throwing four Hearts wide on the left. Diallo has the ball in his hands. I think he probably knows his time is going to be up very shortly. Rolls his sleeves up and drops the ball. You know one of the things that up here in Scotland, we're well aware that today's referee can be unusual sometimes. Yeah, definitely can. Willie Colm can throw a, a span on the works now and then, but you have to have all players on the, the pitch, especially after Wednesday night. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Pat Nevany was at the, uh, the English FA Cup final last weekend, watched extra time and penalties. I oh, don't jinx it. Was in Seville on Wednesday night, watched extra time <laughs> and penalties. And here he is at the Scottish Cup final. Rangers coming down the left. Chip pull from Balogun. Anxiously watching as Bassi leaps to control it. Dummies the cross initially with his left foot. Clever body movement from Kent. Tries to shake off Liam Boyce. And actually the foul goes against Kent. Who thought he dummied Boyce and then was pushed by Boyce. But actually the referee, Willie Collins, decided that Kent fouled Boyce free kick hearts. Well, Pat just said about Willie Collins 30 <laughs> seconds ago. And there you go. I think Ryan Kent does well to sidestep the, ch the challenge. Yeah. He makes a little yard for himself and Boys just bundles into him. He but does. how he's given it the other way, <laughs> I don't know. But Boyce is quite clever about it, isn't he? He throws yeah. his body in the way, then throws his body in the ground. Uh, very, very fortunate. It's a shame for Rangers there. Still so certainly a good position. Bassi might have been able to get a, free, a, a cross in there. Decided not to in that occasion. Tell surprise substitution for Rangers. The ball goes up. It's the number nine, Ahmad Diallo, who is applauding the Rangers fans as he leaves the field. He will be replaced by Scott Wright, one of those Rangers players who started that Europa League final. Uh, on Wednesday night in Seville. So Scott Wright comes on. We've had 18 minutes gone already in the second half of this Scottish Cup final. Still nil-nil. Sunderland won Wickham nil in the League One playoff final. Final day of Premier League action tomorrow afternoon. Five live sport on air from midday with Mark Chapman. Commentary starts, all the games kicking off at four o'clock at the Etihad Stadium. John Murray and Leon Osman are there to see if Manchester City can get what they need to pick Liverpool to the title. Reporters at all the games, all the stories, all the goals, everything will be covered. And as always, uh, your Monday Football Daily podcast will be a great listen off the back of all that. So don't miss that tomorrow. Bassi's throw in, headed away by Suter. The ball drops just inside the Rangers' half. Herring back to Kingsley. A couple of touches from him. Good incisive low pass to the right. Atkinson drifts in field, runs away from Bassey, finds Herring, has got two blue shirts in front of him, plays it to Devlin. Devlin, good vision, floats a pass over the top of the midfielders, wide to Kingsley. Kingsley to Cochrane for Hart, building it nicely down the left. Barry Mackay trying to take on Tavernier, sticks his left foot in and knocks the ball out of play for a throw into Hart on the left. Yeah, better for Hart there. He really held the ball better in midfield. One of the problems has been getting any sort of control and any foothold in midfield playing it through there. But that time, a little bit better. 20 minutes gone in the second half almost. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Hearts again building. This time they've worked it to the right. Atkinson, early cross in. Very nearly found Sims. Ball goes right across the Rangers box. Tavernier, all he can do is clear it out for a Hearts throw. Well, I was talking about quality street earlier on with Calvin Bassey. That's just up there as well. Cochran with a right-footed shot. Uh, cross right in the danger area. Right, player got back underway with the Hearts throw. Match ball. Is there a problem with the ball? Yeah, they think it's gone down. Yeah, I think it's gone down. It's the one to Seville. Is it that one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, just a moment there, it's a shame that Sims, Sims actually had the, attacked the ball, but he should have actually gone to the back post first and then attacked it from there, which he didn't do, which is a real shame. And it's something he's got to learn to make sure that he does the right thing. For a defender, you want him standing there near oh, post. Yeah. Play back underway with a drop ball. It's gone out for a Hearts throw. 25 minutes to go. And if we're still level at that point, we're heading to extra time, which is going to be very tough for Rangers just three days on from extra time against Frankfurt in Seville. Hearts having a good spell at the moment in the second half. We're taking it back to Wembley shortly. Atkinson plays the ball down the right to Liam Boyce. Boyce flicks it back to Atkinson into the Rangers box, looking for the cutback. The ball runs back to Boyce. Good challenge on Boyce from Balogun. Gets himself up the Rangers centre-back. Clears. Sliding challenge from Devlin and the ball is out for a Rangers throw in the left-back position. So to Wembley, Aaron Paul. Sunderland won, Wickham nil. Wickham Wanderers with their first major opportunity of this game. The ball looping over the top of Bailey right. It fell for Sam Vokes. He just couldn't sort his feet up. And out came Patterson, the Sunderland goalkeeper, low down with a brave save. Jed, Vokes has got to do better. 
Yeah, it, Bailey Wright lost it in the sun. It bounced over his head and he sort of gets a touch on it. And it's one of them where he's waiting an age for it to come down so he can get a clean contact on it. And in that time, uh, Patterson manages to get out and smother the ball. Brandon Hanlon on for Wickham Rogers. An attacking change. Sunderland one, Wickham nil. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Jed. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Weak sunshine here in Glasgow at Hampden Park. Rangers have it, the ball that is. Nil-nil against Hearts, inside the Hearts half. Kent starts a run, runs into an offside position. Bassey could have played it and found him, apologises to his teammates. Back with Lundstrom. Lundstrom gives it back to Bassey. Return pass to Lundstrom, who then starts to bring it forward. Kent, corner of the Hearts area. Overlapping run from Bassey. Cross deep to the far post, nodded down beyond Stephen Davis. Lundstrom with a flick. Arfield wasn't quite ready for it, but reacted quickly enough to play it back to Balogun. Connor Goldson starts to run forward for Rangers, overhits the pass. Tavernier is such an attacking right back, Alan Hutton. There he is trying to get into the box, and the pass was just beyond him. Yeah, it's just really unlucky. Tavernier, you know he's going to make that dart and run into the box. He likes to get up ahead of play. Goldson just puts a little bit extra on it, and it just. It's off that slick surface, it just runs away from him, but that's where you want him. Tavernier up high, Bassey up high on the other side, causing problems. Craig Gordon clears four hearts, the ball is loose inside the Rangers' half, Kent is first to it, drops the shoulder, throws a little dummy, but plays a simple pass back to Bassey. Nathaniel Atkinson actually took a little knock in the most recent Hearts attack and was down injured behind the byline for 30 seconds or so, he's OK. Scott Wright is making a run in behind here, down the right for Rangers. Kingsley gets back to cover it for Hearts. The ball is played back to Tavernier, on to Davis. Davis plays it into the middle of the Hearts half where it's collected by Lundstrom. Lundstrom back to Davis, wide on the right. Little chip ball to Arfield on the corner of the Hearts box. Davis on the turn with his left foot, sweeps the pass across the face of the area. Atkinson onto it, quickly onto Boyce. Atkinson's knocked over by Bassey. Boyce keeps going, and eventually the ref takes it back for the initial foul on Nathaniel Atkinson. Boyce is down, flat on his back. He looks tired, free kick for Hearts. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. It probably is a foul. I mean, it does, it does what all fullbacks do. He tries to cut off the space. He doesn't allow him to run round him, and then just can't move. I mean, it's, it's like running into a brick wall, but. <laughs> It is probably right, even though the Rangers fans aren't happy. I think the, the one um, Hearts fans have won a yellow card there. It's not a yellow card. It's nowhere near a yellow card. It's just a free kick. Atkinson's been in the wars, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. yeah. Down a couple of times. And it, it just shows you, we're talking about tiredness of the Rangers players. There's a few tired legs out there. We're in Maroon as well. Yeah. Two Scotland internationals with us in the commentary position here for Five Live this afternoon. who know all about playing on that turf below with Pat Nevin and Alan Hutton alongside me, Craig Gordon floats the free kick forward, Sims wins the flick on can't find a teammate and the ball bounces harmlessly behind from the Hearts point of view and goes behind for a goal kick. You can see Sims is less action now isn't he you know he's, he's still making the effort but you know and if you give him a chance he's still capable of scoring a goal but that all action that you saw for 20-25 minutes it just falls away and that's not a complaint, he's just got to get 90 minutes in his legs Liam Boyce tackling back for Hearts. Great challenge on Bassey. Atkinson away for Hearts down the right. Ryan Kent has a little hack at him, knocks him over, and Atkinson does win the free kick for Hearts. I, I, I don't think that's a foul. I'm just watching again. I think Ryan Kent does unbelievably well to get back gold side. He actually gets round in front of him. And then, uh, I think it's a good foot in the ball. Atkinson, yeah, feels a bit of contact goes down, but not for me. I think he was, he was always looking for it, Atkinson. He was waiting for a challenge to come in there, and he's got three players around him, and he's never going to get away. He's never going to get away from them. Gets a free kick, it's a soft one, but a chance to put it in the box. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Possibility of extra time and penalties. Could Rangers fans really bear that again? Just three days on from the heartbreak of Seville. 20 minutes to play, 20 minutes away from extra time. Barry Mackay launches one high in the air. McLaughlin comes a long way. Good leap from the Rangers keeper and grabs it cleanly. Up to his feet quickly. You can just see the uh, the bottom of the uh, 
the black underlayer, the black cycling shorts underneath that bright orange goalkeeping outfit. Another try at Twickenham, Chris Jones. Harlequins 21, Gloucester 24. You said it earlier, Ali, it's rarely dull when Quinns are around. They've scored 14 unanswered points after half-time to cut the gaps just three. Joe Marchand with his second try of the half. What a final 18 minutes in store. Harlequins 21, Gloucester 24. Great run forward from Scott Wright for Rangers. 1-2 with a Rebo, slides in and tries to shoot Kingsley in with a crucial intervention for Hart. Makes the tackle behind for a Rangers corner. Good football. It's the one thing that Scott Wright gives you, that burst of pace, the changes. It's very difficult to keep up as a defender where one 2 when somebody so quick hits in behind. Real unlucky. That's what he needs to do moving forward more often. Now you get Tavernier actually taking their corner. Should be a bit better calling, huh? OK, let's see. Tavernier with the corner. Still goalless in the Scottish Cup final. Tavernier waits, jogs on the spot, delivery is high, lofted to the far post, Goldson wins the first header, up in the air it goes, drops down on the edge of the box, Davis volleys it forward, comes back to Calvin Bassey, a man alone on the halfway line for Rangers, Rangers attacking this goal towards their fans, behind the goal away to our left, Kent with a little layoff, back to Davis, Davis looks up, goes for the 20-yard diagonal into the area, nodded down, looking for Lundstrom in the middle, Rangers appeal for a corner but it's given as a goal kick, you just, just keep on, you can't help it, you just keep on looking down at the benches now, don't you, thinking we've got to make some more changes, there's a lot of tired players out there, we're getting to 72 minutes, who can make a difference? But see the crazy thing for me is, that's why I keep looking, because normally you would have all your subs out, it's warming. like 72 minutes played, they would be warming up, getting ready for it, Hearts are doing it, Rangers haven't. See, this is a bit that drives me mad, you don't have to wait for the manager to tell you, yeah. get out there and show them that you're ready to go on. Clearance from Craig Gordon, flicked on again by Sims, no one running beyond him, Goldson heads it back to his goalkeeper John McLaughlin, producer Rob just pointing out he's not seen any of the Rangers subs warming up, which they're, which they're not uh, at the moment, they have made the one change, Scott Wright is on, he's on the ball, Rebo's making a run for him, Suter read it well, comes across and knocks the ball out of play for a Rangers throw. Pat, I'm like you, if I was on the bench for this game I'd be in front of him warming up, standing know, running up and down in front of him. Giving them a death there. <laughs> Get I, had me to on. Do, I had to do it a few times here for Scotland, I can tell clever, you. Clever flick pass from Scott Wright, a Rebo's cross right across the face of goal and Ryan Kent was very nearly in that position he was in late on against Frankfurt on Wednesday couldn't get on the end of that cross Bassey's tackled well tackled by Atkinson the ball behind for another Rangers corner you do, you do get the feeling you know we've talked about Rangers not wanting the extra time that they are just stepping up here Rangers a little they bit they are but we can't, I can't watch Rangers at the moment without thinking Morelos yeah. if he's there even Ruth even Ruth even Ruth, Ruth yeah yeah Puma Roof is on the bench for Rangers. He could only manage about 10 minutes or so on Wednesday night. Tavernier with the corner from the left. That's good delivery. Powerful header away. Ryan Kent, the ball hits him on the back. He stoops to head it to his right. Lundstrom's there. Plays it to Scott Wright. Hearts defending in numbers. Lundstrom has it wide on the right. Level with the penalty spot. Back to Scott Wright. Stephen Davis just creeps forward looking for a pass. But Rangers come back to Bassey. Bassey's 40 yards out. Tiptoeing forward. Makes a dummy up to the edge of the box. Dummy's a shot. Bassey! Oh, Gordon down low to make a brilliant save to his left. And then Gordon picks himself up, gets to the rebound. Atkinson shielding the ball is knocked over by Stephen Davis. Calvin Bassey, so nearly the hero for Rangers. He's, he's playing that way where his confidence is so high he can do anything on the park. I mean, he's cutting inside, darting run through the middle, everyone on his weaker right hand side. And he just tries to caress the ball into that far corner. Craig Gordon gets down, but he feels like he can do anything. Ball downfield from Gordon down the middle of the pitch. Balogun had to be yeah. careful there. Barry Mackay behind him. He plays it back to McLaughlin, his goalkeeper. Just watching various players out there. Arebo is running on fumes. Absolute fumes. Mm. I, I, it's difficult to imagine. I mean, again, he can still go and score a goal if you put him in front of the goal with the ball. But he's not getting in there anymore. Not getting close, so... I would be surprised if he survives a lot longer than that. Pat, the last Celtic Rangers game we watched a few weeks ago, Sakala played through the middle in the second half and looked absolutely lethal. For yeah, Rangers. and he was lightning quick, and he's much more comfortable centrally than he is out in the wide areas where he's sometimes stuck. So, look, Aribo's done well, but 
the work rate he has put in up until now in these last few games was incredible. Well, what you said, right, you can just back up. The corner, which was excellent delivery from Tavernier, is looking for somebody to go and challenge him. Yeah. He didn't even move, he just stood still. Yeah. Liam, Liam, Liam Boyce uh, coming off, and he's another one, I think, who's, who's just run out of gas and he's been playing with an injury. Warmly applauded by the Hearts fans. Some lovely touches on the ball this afternoon. Boyce is off. And here's a lovely story for you. Boyhood Rangers fan, former player Andy Halliday is out there uh, against his former club trying to win the game uh, for Hart. So we're 15 minutes away from extra time. Connor Goldson on the ball for Rangers. Let's check in at uh, Wembley. That'll have about 15 minutes to go as well in the League One playoff final, Aaron. Sunderland won, Wickham Wanderers nil, and here comes for the last dance. Adebayo Akinfen were 40 years old, Wickham Wanderers record EFL goal scorer. And this is it for Adebayo Akinfen. This is it for Gareth Ainsworth as well. He's made three substitutions. He needs to find something, and he's hoping it can be Akinfen who can find something in these final 15 minutes. Adebayo Akinfen we're on Sunderland 1 Wickham now thank you Aaron Aaron will keep us posted playing for a place in the championship next season the championship playoff final is a week tomorrow at half past four that is Nottingham Forest against Huddersfield we'll be at that bringing you updates into Sunday's five live sport that afternoon Champions League final here next Saturday night corner in Aribo's header meaty header straight up in the air he feels he was shoved it goes behind for a goal kick to Hearts, it needs someone to do something special. I mean, Calvin Bassey actually very nearly did it there for Rangers. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you keep on saying right hand side, left hand side with Rangers attacking down those areas. You know, every five or ten minutes they get a ball across the goal. Somebody's got to take a chance to make it there. Get there, get there, because it's a tapping. Well, having said that, it's a tapping. You're still with Craig Gordon to beat, and yeah. that's not going to be an easy thing. But they need to get someone between the sticks. It was like trying to beat Kevin Trapp, wasn't it, with that late chance for Ryan Kent on Wednesday night. Gordon's in the mood for Hearts. This game on a knife edge. Scottish Cup final, five live and BBC Sounds. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. 13 minutes remaining of the 90. Rangers on the ball. Trying to win their first Scottish Cup since 2009 under the late Walter Smith. Nacho Novo with the winning goal that afternoon against Falkirk. Rangers calmly knocking the ball around inside their own half. Goldson across to Balogun. Bassi is wide on the touchline. Give it to me. He is eager to have the ball, but they go back into midfield. Davis in the centre circle. Plays it to Lundstrom. Lundstrom looks up, sees the run from Aribo. Aribo dropping a little deeper. Rolls it back to Scott Wright. Scott Wright looking for the run of Davis. Covered by Devlin. Volleyed out for a throw into Rangers on the right. Look how high Tavernier's playing now. He's just shifted right up high where it's difficult to pick him up. Rangers trying to work it in from the right from the throw. Here's Stephen Davis. Corner of the Hearts penalty area. Out wide, Tavernier, chance to get that cross into the far post, beyond everyone, Ryan Kent turns on his heel, sprints hard to get to that ball, keeps it in play, wide on the left, Bassey starts to make the run again, chance for Bassey to get the cross in, Halliday chases him, Halliday misses the ball, catches, no! Free kick not given, I was convinced he'd fouled Bassey there, and then Halliday is fouled by Scott Arfield, who felt he had to do that for Rangers, but how that wasn't a free kick on Bassey, I have absolutely no idea, Pat Nevins. Well, there's, you said that Craig Gordon has always got one brilliant save in him every game. Willie Collins always got one decision. <laughs> I mean, and it's kind of hard to explain why that's not a free kick. How far are we sitting away from that? And it's obvious. It's obvious to everyone. You can hear what the fans make of it, but... Well, give him a chance. We're going to see the replay here. He's turned around. Oh, no, he's taking him out. <laughs> the, the defender's not even looking. He's checked back. Bassey's done well to actually check back. And Andy Halliday's momentum has taken him through him. So I, I don't understand how he's not given a foul for that. It's in a dangerous area. Former Rangers man with the foul on the current Rangers player. But the ire of the Rangers fans directed at referee Willie Collum. Uh, Herring heads the ball forward for Hearts. Are we going to have this cup final decided late in normal time? Are we headed for extra time on Five Live Sport this afternoon? Lundstrom's ball down the left. Flying across his suitor, throws himself at the header, nods it out of play, throwing for Rangers right in front of the two managers. Ryan Jack is going to come on. 
which has started the Europa League final on Wednesday night. Stephen Davis is coming on. So that's a, a, a reversal of what they did on Wednesday. Stephen Davis has given it 80 minutes in the Scottish Cup final this afternoon. Good performance, such a reliable performer. And Glenn Kamara coming on for Scott Arfield. So Arfield and Davis were the two who started the game today in place of Jack and Kamara. And now we are back uh, to what Rangers midfield looked like at the start of the Europa League final on, on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously for the leg situation, they've, they've ran out of steam, but I think they need a little bit more up the park. Right? What we were saying earlier about Arebo kind of running out of steam, you've got Roof there, you've got it in there, but you can make a change. That actually slightly surprised me. I actually thought Stephen Davis is playing really well and getting more control of the midfield as the space was developing. Hart's getting ready to bring Josh Ginelli on. Halliday and Bassi bump into each other again. Bassi feels he was fouled again. That just looked like a, a collision. The ball's gone out for a throw into Hearts, and Bassi is, is definitely fired up. So here comes the change for Hearts. Barry Mackay is coming off. Josh Ginelli is coming on. But far more importantly, there's been a goal at Wembley. Aaron Paul. Sunderland 2, Wickham 1 just now. Ross Stewart may have just scored the all-important goal to send Sunderland to the championship just as Wickham were getting back into the game Sunderland fire a deadly blow at the heart of the chair boys they were looking so good since Adam Akinfemwa came on Wickham Wanderers but Sunderland against the runner player have gone up the other end and they slotted in inside the uh, inside the D Ross Stewart turned swivel shot Jed Wallace crucial goal Bedlam at Wembley I can barely hear myself think goes into Stewart all six foot four and he moves so well gives himself half a yard reverse shot through the legs of Stuart Stockdale has no chance that is a complete number nine performance that we've seen from him this evening unbelievable finish and Wickham have got a mountain to climb now Ali I was just about to tell you how well Wickham were doing since Akin Fenwell came on they look good they look sprightly they've just had a chance through Brandon Hanlon who scuffed an opportunity after beating two men on the left hand side but it is Sunderland now with a two goal advantage Sunderland two Wickham Wanderers nil could be a momentum this afternoon for Sunderland they are not too far away from a return to the championship we are eight minutes or so away from extra time in the Scottish Cup final here producer friend of ours Gary Flintoff at Wembley this afternoon I'm probably giving a little bit away by saying I can imagine he has got a massive massive smile on his face at the moment hope he's enjoying his afternoon Glenn Kamara edge of the hearts box one of the substitutes on for Rangers Kent's made the run down to the byline tries to get the cross in headed behind for a corner quickly to Twickenham Chris Jones the comeback Kings are at it again from 24-7 down Quinns now lead 28-24 Caden Murley into the corner as it stands Quinns storming into the playoffs eight and a half minutes to go Harlequins 28 Gloucester 24 right so late drama at Wembley late drama at Twickenham are we going to get late drama in the 90 minutes here at Hampden Park corner for Rangers pressing again here trying to end this season under Giovanni van Bronckhorst with some silverware to show for it Tavernier with his right foot takes the corner good delivery oh headed just wide great lead from Bal Balogun in the middle, connects with the header powerfully and it's hit just the sort of outside of the side netting and then the stanchion at the back of the goal and it's made the entire goal shake. And you wonder why Tavernier wasn't on the, the three kicks in the first half. That is a great delivery into a really difficult area as a defender to pick up. It's a good run from Balogun and he just hits the roof of the net. A couple inches down, it's 1-0. What really surprised me is Sims didn't come back for it. And considering he's about six foot four or whatever, his his height is definitely needed in there, and that's one of the reasons why he got a clear header at goal. That was close. Great delivery, good header, as Alan said, just couldn't quite get it down. Great leap from Balogun, timed the run beautifully, very close to what potentially could have been a cup final winning goal. Nil-nil. Goldson on the ball for Rangers. Hearts under a bit of pressure. They brought Josh Ginelli on, 25-year-old English striker, who actually scored uh, four hearts the last time they were in the final. Eventually lost that game to Celtic on penalties, having come back from 2-0 down to get to 2-2. On it went into extra time, finished 3-3. Hearts lost it on penalties. This one could still go to penalties this afternoon. Maybe not, though, if Rangers have their say here. Lundstrom with the drive. Brilliant block. Rangers fans appeal for a handball. It was Suter who came flying in. Kent cross in. Suter's there again. Throws himself at a diving header. Kent wins the next header. Kamara plays it back to Scott Wright. Hearts player down. That's a head injury, I think. Willie Collum has to stop the game. He's got no choice. The Rangers fans are frustrated because they really were building ahead of steam there. Yeah, and Ryan Kent's curious about it. He doesn't think it's 
a real injury, but the right referee is nothing they can do about it. As you watch this game, you expected Rangers to tire as the game came to near, near a conclusion. Absolutely not the case. Rangers look by a distance the stronger team as you come into this last five minutes or so. It actually looked like that John Lundstrom shot from distance that sort of throws his body at it. It looks like it does hit his elbow, but there's nothing much you can do. There's nothing in it. He's just... Nothing much you can do, nothing in it, and no VAR. No VAR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't make a difference. Well, it's yeah. supposed to be coming in next season at yeah. some stage. If, it, so. if it's not spotted live in this game, then nothing can be done about it. But definitely one of those at a VAR would be looking at. Yeah, they would. Were VAR in play uh, at this final? Alfredo Morelos watches on for Rangers. Some of the chances he might have been able to stick away this afternoon. Still nil-nil. Miss hit, cross from Lundstrom, blocked. Might go behind for another Rangers corner. Tavernier will come jogging across to take it the delivery recently from him has been absolutely pinpoint Rangers came close on the last one can they find a way through 86th minute of the Scottish Cup final nothing between the teams at the moment Rangers nil Hearts nil Rangers players in the blue shirt start to make the runs in the box Tavernier says wait just wait now he's ready to go right arm goes up little jog on the spot there's the delivery good ball again headed away only as far as Ryan Kent Kent sees Tavernier in loads of space on the left one touch cross comes in Suter stoops heads it away second header from Cochrane only as far as Kent for Rangers gets the ball back wide on the left from Ryan Jack and Kent's going to have a run at Andy Halliday drops his shoulder edge of the area runs into too many bodies Devlin gets a foot in Hart should have a chance to clear this low ball down the right hand side beyond Devlin intercepted by Ryan Jack Rangers fans interested again they sent something coming here Jack on the left low cross is blocked goes out for a Rangers throw attacking position can on hold, the left can hold it up can they Hearts cannot hold it up they're under constant pressure from Rangers Rangers want to finish this in the name 87th minute of the game, Ryan Jack with a curler. I think Craig Gordon knew as soon as it left Jack's boot that that was just missing. It looked good from here, just too high, just too wide behind for the goal kick. Yeah, from the corner of the box, I mean, it's a fair distance. I think it's going to have to be an unbelievable effort to beat Craig Gordon from there. So he had it well covered, wasn't flustered, well out. Um, can I ask the obvious question? I mean, if, if this goes to extra time, does that, that favours Hart, surely? No. No. No, I don't think I'm so, not man. Sure. No, I'm not I, sure. I'm, I can't believe I'm saying it. It's a great question, but I'm looking at those two teams out there, and I think the better team out there just now is Rangers. OK. Might not need that. Still got a few minutes to play. Atkinson with his pass down the right. Ginelli gets his first touch for Hart since coming on. Little live wire striker flicks the ball into the shins of Connor Goldson, wins a corner, then turns to the Hearts fans, lift his arms three or four times to get some more encouragement from them. And Hearts, having been on the back foot for the last 10 minutes, now have an attacking set piece. Well, if you're a Rangers fan, you'll remember a few years ago, a corner in the last minutes of a, an F, a Scottish Cup final against an Edinburgh team. And they lost it 3 2 in a last minute corner from that exact spot. Where I can't believe you're bringing that <laughs> up, Pat. Come on. Right. Well, there's only one reason why <laughs> it happened to and it might happen again. Corner coming for Hearts. Incredible scene away to our right. Hearts fans have got their maroon and white scarves in their hand. It's a, a blur of maroon and white away to our right as they twirl and twizzle those scarves in the air. Kingsley with the corner right on top of McLaughlin, the goalkeeper. Really easy for him to deal with and Hearts have wasted that opportunity. McLaughlin bowls it out underarm to Tavernier. Tavernier goes long here up towards Scotty Wright. Headed away by Cochrane for Hearts. Jack wins it, plays it to Arebo. Could be a late chance, 89th minute of the game. Arebo wide to Ryan Kent, chests it down the energy from Bassey to get there on the supporting run and the cross in to the near post, Suter is there again for Hart out for a throw it's to Rangers. An, it's amazing play down the left hand side again but it's probably the one thing that you'd maybe say about Bassey, out with the one in the first half, it's the, it's the delivery into the box, it'll come but that's the one thing superhuman stamina yeah. and energy and speed from Calvin Bassey, step overs again, here he is short pass to Ryan Kent on the left, Kent has a runner, Atkinson, turns him inside out, gets that cross in, Suter again for Hart, heads it away, standing in Rangers way, soon to be a Rangers player, but this afternoon doing everything he can to stop them winning the Scottish Cup. 90th minute of the game, heading towards extra time, 
and possibly those dreaded penalties for Rangers after what happened to them on Wednesday night. Bassi with the outside of his left foot. Plays the ball to Jack, wide to Glen Kamara, through the legs of Kent, but it hit Kent on the way through. Half intercepted the pass, Ellis Sims has given it away for Hart. Kamara, three minutes of added time at the end of the game. Rangers win another throw on the left. I mean, if I was Hart, you asked that question beforehand, should they play for extra time? <laughs> I don't know what they can do, they can't get their own half. Kent, short ball to right, into the air. Oh, that's a shirt pull on a Rebo! What a save by Craig Gordon! Has to be a penalty! Oh, he's no. given a corner! He's given a corner! Craig Gordon's done it again, because a Rebo shot was heading for the bottom corner. Gordon couldn't get there with his hands. He stuck out a left leg and saved it with his boot behind for the corner, but a Rebo shirt was being pulled. How is that not a penalty? It has to be. It has it's 100%. To be. There's not even a question mark about it. That is a definite... Atkinson, Atkinson just drags them back and puts them off. Corner for Rangers. Tavernier from the right. High swinging one into the box. Kingsley heads it away. Drops down inside the box. Hart's desperate. Throw another boot at it. Kingsley clears it. Rangers definitely should have had a penalty late in this game. And Rebo continued to play. He got the shot away. Gordon saved it brilliantly. But his shirt was definitely being tugged. Hart's defence is creaking badly at the end of this cup final. Still nil-nil. Three minutes of added time being played. Arebo's layoff to Kamara. Arebo gets it back again. So nearly a big goal in a big game for him. Scott Wright, was he fouled there? Rangers get the free kick. Now they want that decision and they get that decision, but they will argue at the end of this game, whatever happens, they should have had a penalty. They should have. And we've seen the replay there. It's, it's real good play from Arebo. He gets that half a yard and Atkinson just drags him back. So it's obviously going to put you off when you go to strike the ball. Don't get me so wrong, it's a wonder save by Craig Gordon. But he gets that opportunity because of the drag back. We are in the perfect position to see it. All three of us can see the massive pull of the shot. Now, maybe the referee didn't see that, but that's his job and he should have. Late set piece, minutes to play. Minute of added time remaining. Sunderland heading back to the Championship, leading Wickham 2-0 at Wembley. Can Rangers win the Scottish Cup deep in added time? Tavernier with the free kick from the right. In it comes. There's the header, clips the bar. And Rangers go oh so close again. Craig Gordon, a relieved man, will take the goal kick shortly. Scott Wright was the man who met the header well. It was heading for the top corner. It was just too high. It's hit the woodwork. It remains nil-nil. I mean, how close can you get? Should have had a penalty kick. They've had tons of bosses. Balls coming across. Crosses from the right, crosses from the left. Hearts can't get out of their own half at the moment, just about. And now they've hit the crossbar and... Uh, I don't think Rangers fans are thinking, oh no, not again, because in actual fact, they keep on doing it, they keep on going, they're actually playing well just now. So they're still my main favourites to win this game, but cup final, anything can happen. Well, Pat's seen plenty of extra time in the last seven days. I think we're heading that way again. We've got about 15 seconds to play, unless Ryan Kent's going to do something about it. Stopped by Devlin. Kent tries to win the ball back for Rangers. Loads of blue shirts and maroon shirts battling for it. There's a the full-time whistle. We're heading for another 30 minutes, just like Rangers had to do in Seville on Wednesday night. Still the possibility of penalties again for Rangers in a big, big final. And Steve Crossman, they should have had a penalty in added time there. Brilliant save from Craig Gordon to deny a rebo, but his shirt was being pulled. The referee couldn't have seen that clearly, because how that's not a penalty, I have no idea. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. Willie Collum. <laughs> You literally said about the referee, Pat Nevin, that he has one strange decision in him. There's been at least two, but that's the most important. Uh, did I only say one? <laughs> You're right. Um, no, that was you know, a, a very odd one. I mean, it's a tough job out there as referee, and he, he did make a big one that's quite infamous uh, the other week there in Scotland um, about a sending off that clearly wasn't. It's time with that one, and I know a lot of people don't like VAR, and there's a lot of argument and debate about it up in Scotland. If you get VAR, that's a penalty kick. You just go and see it again, and you see it's a drag back, and it's given. Right, so, I mean, Rangers can be understandably upset about that, but they're on top of this game, they're playing incredibly well. The reason why they're not winning the game isn't really necessarily the referee, it's because they haven't got a natural striker on that pitch just now. They have had so many opportunities to get a guy in the right position, and he just needs, needs a natural sniffer. If Ruth isn't capable of playing, why is he on the bench? So if they bring him on and he is capable and they keep on doing what they're doing just now, Rangers will win this trophy.
There's a load more we could say on that decision, but if we did that, we would make the mistake of taking too much away from Craig Gordon, Alan. That is an unbelievable save. It's a wonder save, it really is. It, it reminds me of the likes of Alan McGregor. He comes up at big moments in time and just pulls off a save that you think, how's that possible? And there again, we said at the start of the, the show that he will need to have a big performance today and that's why he plays to this age he looks after himself and he's still playing at that level and he keeps his team in the game he didn't catch it though <laughs> <laughs> yeah just the toe not the fingers uh, right we're going into extra time here at Hamden what about at Twickenham is it full time there now Chris Jones it is Steve another stunning comeback to add to the Harlequin scrapbook this time a mere 21 unanswered second half points to beat Gloucester by 20 8 to 24 it sends the champions into the playoffs they might even sneak a home semi-final Gloucester now need results to go their way to reach the last four almost 50,000 here it's been great fun in the Twickenham Sun Harlequins 28 Gloucester 24 Robbie Nielsen giving one of the most important team talks of his managerial career maybe the most there's another proud Scott at Wembley who's going to be celebrating very shortly Aaron Paul Sunderland under a minute away from being back in the championship for the first time in four seasons. They're leading Wickham Wanderers here by two goals to nil. Wickham pushing everything, throwing the kitchen sink at Sunderland. But Jeb Wallace, the Sunderland defence have been magnificent. They've marshaled themselves so well this afternoon. Solid. Uh, so nice to see a player in Lyndon Gooch who's been through the mill and back with his football club. Uh, very exciting young player in the Premier League. Now he's playing the League One final for the same club. Right back, him and Danny Barth, particularly at the back, have been solid. Clean sheet, fantastic number nine performance from, from Ross Stewart. And it looks like an unbelievable job by Alex Neal to go 16 games unbeaten. Sunderland are seconds away from being back in the Championship, Aaron. The Mackham party is about to begin. And following scenes we've seen this week with regards to pitch invasions and uh, trouble, with regards to pitch invasions, there is a huge police presence. They're all around the perimeter, the Sunderland fans here at Wembley lined up the police just in case of any potential issues but listen to that noise Jed you talked about the atmosphere in fact you showed me your goosebumps earlier listen to that it's beautiful it's unbelievable uh, five years yesterday I was here Steve Morrison scored a goal certain goal that got us promoted from the set in the same game there it is what a moment for Sunderland Aaron the hurt the disappointment everything that has happened to Sunderland it's all gone now. They're promoted back to the championship. They won't be playing League One football next year because they've beaten Wickham Wanderers here by two goals to nil. Elliot Embleton and Ross Stewart with the goals. Sunderland will be playing in the championship next year, Steve. Sunderland's day at Wembley. The picture here at Hamden still unclear. Ali. Rangers nil, Hearts nil. First period of extra time is underway. Those poor old Rangers fans have got to go through it again. Another 30 minutes of nerve shredding football. They've had their chances in the second half. They've come on strong. Scott Wright's late header clipping the crossbar. Should have had a penalty for the pullback on Joe Arebo. But here we are, and we said it was going to happen. Craig Gordon was bound to make at least one stunning, spectacular save. He did exactly that to deny Arebo. The shot was heading for the bottom corner, stuck out a left leg and diverted it just wide of the post. So back underway, Rangers in the blue shirts, white shorts, black socks and the red tops to the socks, playing from left to right in this second half. Hearts all in maroon and we are nil-nil. Do you know what the argument the referee might give over that incident was? I let the play go on and it could have led to a goal because, you know, obviously it was, it was on target that shot. I'm not buying it. Bassi's cross. That looks good. Arebo's header from close range goes flying over the bar. Was his shirt being pulled that time? Well, that's going to be a goal kick. Again, a brilliant Bassi cross. I wonder if Kingsley was pulling him back there. Bassi has been absolute standout again. I mean, I know I questioned his delivery, but that was just in terms of what he does in the whole game but that is another top top notch cross into the box again you need a natural striker in there I don't I think be, it's a pull no I don't think it's a pull no. back there at all I think you're going to connect at some point to the player and there's no complaints whatsoever when the ball is actually played into a river. but it's just it's amazing though you think you've got Ruth on the, the bench you've got Allen on the bench why? why yeah. not? exactly I mean it doesn't make a lot of sense for any Rangers fans sitting here going we've made about there was about 10 in the second half their balls zip across the box and then you've not got anyone to put it in there an actual player here come Rangers again Glenn Kamara up to the corner of the Hearts penalty a little step over 
attempted pass is blocked and it goes behind for a corner. Cedric Itton scored with a header last week against Hearts from a set piece, didn't he? I remember that. Yeah, he's, he's warming up the now. We, we can see him warming up just down below us, but whether it happens or not, we'll wait and see. OK, Ruth, Itton, Sakala, potential additions to this Rangers team. First period of extra time, jam-packed Hamden Park, nails being bitten to the quick, corner for Rangers. Let's have an ear again to take. Rangers dependable right back. In it comes. Headed out to the edge of the box. Good control. Shot driven brilliantly by Ryan Jack. Thumping into the back of the net. Craig Gordon is complaining that he couldn't see. But his view was blocked by a Rangers player in an offside position. No VAR in the Scottish Cup final. Ryan Jack is piled upon by his Rangers teammates. That's an absolute screamer. They finally found a way through. Rangers lead Hearts by a goal to nil. What an absolute wonder strike. I mean, if that's to win this Scottish Cup, unbelievable. It's a great ball in a game from Tavernier, headed out. Ryan Jack, I was actually thinking to myself, is he going to shoot here? And he does. Wow, what an effort. He's absolutely leathered that one. It's come through a bunch of players, I've granted you that. Craig Gordon's complaining of the player offside and maybe even a handball involved in it. I actually can't see that at all. No, he smashed it. I actually think there's a tiny little flick off a heart's head on the way through, and that's killed any chances. I'm not sure, you know, I think that's just... It might actually go through. (laughs) It has the underside of the bar. It's coming through traffic. Wonder strike. Power. Sheer power from Ryan Jack and Rangers are coming at it again Ryan Kent chasing a through ball Gordon is there well the unbelievable save from Craig Gordon late in normal time nothing he could do about that one Ryan Jack great touch let fly from the edge of the box and like a rocket into the back of the net Rangers leading hearts by a goal to nil Goldson is fouled Rangers free kick inside their own half and if you are hearts just now you're thinking what can you do because if hardly go out your own half for about 25 minutes there a lot of players are looking very tired and you're just looking possibly bench is there anything else you can do with fresh it's now? amazing we talk about Hearts looking to run over Rangers they've played a lot of football recently Rangers are the team think of their fitness levels but I just said that to Alistair at the end of the yeah. game there I can't believe I'm saying this they are the fittest team the, the, this game is clearly not over 25 minutes to play but what a response mentally and physically from this Rangers team they haven't won the Scottish Cup since 2009 beaten in that penalty shootout heartbreakingly by those fabulous Eintracht Frankfurt penalties on Wednesday runners up to Celtic in the league a League Cup semi-final defeat to Hibs as well but here they are trying to lay their hands on the Scottish Cup plenty of time to play in extra time Ryan Jack has them in front and, and you have to say, they deserve the lead, particularly the way that second half went. Yeah, I think so. I think they've worked ever so well. They've, their combination playing, everything's been good down both wings. They've created enough opportunities, but that's the first one they've managed to take. Throwing for hearts, so what can they find? Having lost cup finals, Scottish Cup finals 2019 and 2020. This a third appearance in the final in four years. They're being sliced open by Rangers on the counter. Scott Wright flying down the right. Ryan Kent has seen him, rolls the ball into Wright's path, edge of the area, shoots and scores for Rangers. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, the manager, in his smart grey suit, is leaping around like a lunatic in the technical area. He runs over to celebrate with his Rangers players the pain of defeat in the Europa League final of Wednesday night is being washed away at Camden Park in extra time Scott Wright has a second it's Rangers 2 hearts nil the way that they broke there the pace the Rangers broke there considering what they've gone through recently there was never in doubt there they got a four on two but what about the substitutions you want your substitutions to, to make a difference in a game on comes Ryan Jack melted into the back of the net on comes right he scores a cracker that finish is up there I mean you think to beat a, a player like Craig Gordon a going across his body is inch perfect right into that side net Rangers had every right to go into that first period of extra time heads down should have had a penalty we hit the bar late on Craig Gordon makes an unbelievable save they've done exactly the opposite of that yeah but I wasn't surprised that because they were so dominant and they were getting more and more dominant it is a wee bit easier 
to play it all, by the way. They're away they again. Come. Glenn Kamara releases Ryan Kent. Arebo in the middle. Kent chops back onto his right foot. Hart's trying to get bodies in the way. Couldn't get the shot away. All of a sudden there, you thought Rangers were going to run away with it. He has to hit the ball there. Like, I know it's on his weaker side, but he's turning back into traffic. Hit it with the left foot. Hearts at the moment, if you're going to use the boxing analogy, they're the groggy boxer, aren't they? I mean, I mean, the knockout punch has probably been delivered, but they are there for the taking. No, they've been going, they've been on the ropes for a long time, a long time in this game. But they just haven't looked at the score, and they've had very, very, very few attacks in that second half there. Well, they won't give up, and if they could get one back now, it would give them a lift. Ellis Sims rolled the ball to his right-hand side. Here come Hearts down the right. Ginelli looking to get the cross in from the right. Bassi on the floor in the way to block him. Ball flicked over him. But Balogun is there for Rangers. Comes striding out of defence with the ball. Rangers fans, as you can hear, finally in party mood. And Pat's doing that thing on the gantry here because when it really gets <laughs> going, you, you actually feel... Well, the stadium is moving, isn't it? It does, actually. It has to move with this sort of stuff or else it's cracked. Yeah. No, but to be fair, the, the Rangers fans have waited a long time for this and they're going to enjoy it. So if you're listening now, you should be fairly relaxed. However, just to put the frighteners on your wee bit, remember Manchester City against Real Madrid. Anything can happen in football. So it's not over yet. Pat Nevin putting Alan Hutton through the ringer again here on Five Live. <laughs> it's been a few times today, they've been a corner with that stat. <laughs> Rangers look comfortable at the moment. They're leading Hearts by two goals to nil. And as much as you feel for the Hearts fans, you cannot begrudge the Rangers fans who travelled in their thousands to Seville in the week and came so close to winning only their second ever European trophy. It looks like they're going to have their hands on the Scottish Cup this afternoon. Scott Wright, scorer of the second goal on the ball, plays it back to Tavernier. An afternoon in which we've heard that Sunderland are back in the championship. Sunderland have beaten Wickham by two goals to nil. Change is coming for Hearts here. Gary Mackay Stephen is coming on for Alex Cochran. They've still got to believe five minutes left in this first period of extra time, then another 15. They know Rangers will be tired, but Rangers running on adrenaline and joy at the moment, leading Hearts by two goals to nil. And if you've enjoyed this this afternoon, don't forget final day of the Premier League season tomorrow. Five Live Sport on air from midday with Mark Chapman. All the games kicking off at four o'clock. Do not miss that. That should be an absolutely fantastic listen uh, tomorrow. Here's Suter with his right foot, playing the ball up into the Rangers half, easily intercepted by Lundstrom, and back it comes uh, to John McLaughlin. Takes his time inside his penalty area, no Hearts player approaches, waits for them to come. Side foot to ball to Balogun, Balogun to Lundstrom, Lundstrom wide to Bassi, who's been absolutely phenomenal again for Rangers in this cup final this afternoon. Yeah, they've got better as the game's going on. I see, when you're not being put under pressure by the opposition, you know, it's just it's quite easy to play football. You just pass it and move, yeah. you know. Unless you're Bassi, you wow. just keep going. Wow, screaming away like a 100-metre sprinter down the left-hand side. Low cross behind two of his teammates. Hearts are able to deal with it. This game is getting very, very stretched now. Five minutes remaining in the first period of extra time. If Hearts can get a goal back, then you never know. Ginelli stopped by Goldson. Ball comes off Goldson and goes out for a throw to Hearts on the left. What about Bassi on that left-hand side? Seriously, it's a serious player. After Wednesday night and the performance tonight, unreal. Incredible noise, as you can hear inside Hampden Park. Robbie Nielsen is scratching his stubbly chin, wondering what his team can possibly do. Being overrun here by Rangers, Arebo on the run down the right, slows things down for Rangers, comfortably leading by two goals to nil, finds Kamara, ball played back into midfield, Ryan Jack got it going with that thunderbolt early in extra time, and Bassi's still got the energy here. Little jump and a trick from him, enjoying himself. Short pass to Kent. Kent dummies to go on the outside. Plays the ball back here to John Lundstrom. Lundstrom with a step over. Peter Herring tries to stick with him on the right. Hearts have won that ball back. Sims on the turn. Stopped by Balogun. Sims played into the Rangers' half, but Goldson has it covered and plays the ball back to his goalkeeper, McLaughlin. Don't believe in it, do they, Hearts? They don't really believe in it as, no. a, as a group. But they've got it within their, you know themselves to be strong enough, to be quick enough, to be, you know, cute enough to be able to create anything that's been a long time since they have done. Again, we talked about this before the game at City when I watched them play against Celtic. They started off on fire, looked great for 20 minutes, whatever, and it fades away really quickly and it, it just shows you when you've got depths of squad the likes of Rangers have got, 
what a difference it makes. Looks like it's going to be three cup final defeats in four years. Four hearts against the old firm. Two against Celtic, one against Rangers today. And Rangers could be cruel here if they're really in the mood. Kamara, lovely first time ball. Really whipped with pace out to Kent. Couldn't quite control it. Atkinson moves in to try and win it. Kent tries to throw him off with a step over. Plays it back to Bassey. Leaves it for Kent. Strokes it to Ryan Jack into Scott Wright in a central position, looking for that one-two. Is that Tavernier there in the centre yeah. forward position? And I might be able to get onto the ball on the right, but Lundstrom's there to cover him. And now Tavernier's on the run down the right for Rangers. Hart's tired, struggling to get to him. He looks up, and in fact, he puts both palms out and says, I'm just going to slow it down for a second. Plays back to Lundstrom, Lundstrom back to the halfway line, and Rangers will build again. Lundstrom looks like he's spent as well, doesn't he? I mean, he's put in another amazing shift. Even Tavernier, I mean, they've given everything for this game today. It's fair play to them all, every one of them. Coming up to half-time in extra time. Two goals early in this first period of extra time. Four Rangers from Ryan Jack and Scott Wright look like they're going to seal the deal. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the calls on 6.06 tonight. They want to hear from Rangers fans and Hearts fans and Premier League fans, whichever team you support ahead of the final day of the season tomorrow. Sunderland fans and Wickham fans as well. Ryan Kent on the move. Hits the shot with his right foot, blazes it wide behind for a goal kick to Hearts. I just think, why not? Do you know what I mean? Why not? It's nearly half time and an extra time. It, it does well to break forward. Still got that energy levels. It just has a shot that's high, wide and handsome. You do know, had that been early in the game and no, no. He'd have played the right ball to a rebel. <laughs> he thought, nah, 2-0 up. Scottish Cup final could do a bit of glory. A couple of keepy-ups from Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. He was a cup winner with Rangers a couple of times. Actually scored. Uh, in the cup final in 2000 in a 4-0 win against Aberdeen Ginelli almost onto a ball but he's fouled Balogun trying to win that on the edge of the box so Rangers will have a free kick it, it, it had to happen early for Hearts you feel today Ellis Sims clipped the outside of the post in the first few minutes of the game had they got themselves in front then maybe but as the game has progressed Rangers have been much the stronger team and they are heading towards the trophy so expecting a half-time whistle to blow shortly in this first period of extra time Rangers fans aren't going to stop singing for the rest of this game and the rest of this night. McLaughlin, who's done everything right again on this cup run for Rangers. Alan McGregor sitting on the bench, watching on. Long clearance downfield, headed away by John Souter. And you can see, Pat, you said it, the belief has just simply drained from the Hearts players. Rangers leading Hearts by two goals to nil. It's all over, isn't it? It's very, very close to being all over. But, you know, if you get a, a lucky goal, something weird happens. But there's not a player, I don't think, in that heart side that looks as if he absolutely believes it. Whereas every blue in blue not only believes, he almost knows, Steve. This is Rangers' 65th game of the season, Alan. Where's that 15 minutes come from? It's unbelievable. It's just that winning mentality. I think when you ha when you are a Rangers player and you've wore that strip, that you know the pressure comes that you have to win trophies. So they know they have to go through the pain barrier, and they're just look. They've been a level above, and I think they've shown that throughout the game. So they thoroughly deserve their two 0 lead. When one, one of the things I would say about it, sorry, Roddy, I didn't realise. And uh, one thing I would say quickly about it, their squad level. I think there's probably 11 players that can move in and move out. Hearts and teams like that can do that. That does help with the 65 games a wee bit. When you consider what Rangers were facing here, Liverpool, when they finish their programme, will have played 63 games. They could win a quadruple. Rangers have played 65. They we're moving into extra time with the potential of winning nothing. What they've done is reached deep into their characters and pulled out triumphantly the character that will win this game, I would predict. And from a neutral's perspective, Alan, in a cup final, you want the goal that wins it or sets you on the way to win it to not be a mistake, to not be controversial, to be like that Ryan Jack blockbuster. Just that that's what we would have dreamt about last night is scoring a goal like that in a cup final. It was it nearly took the net off. And there was, you're right, there was nothing bad about it. It was just pure skill, great strike, and that is what it's all about in finals. The teams are exiting their huddles. Stranger things have happened, Ali, but not many. 
Rangers leading Hearts by two goals to nil. Hearts are, I mean, Rangers have obviously dug deep this afternoon. Hearts are going to have to try and find something from somewhere. You could see Robbie Nielsen in amongst his players, imploring them, trying to give the instructions that the, the plan to try and put Rangers under a little bit of pressure in this second half. They're making a change going into the second period of extra time. Aaron Mukanet, uh, Republic of Ireland midfielder, comes in for Cameron Devlin, the Australian. And as if they weren't tired enough, those Hearts defenders, Fashion Sakala, who is a real speedster up front, the Zambian for Rangers, uh, is coming on and he could cause uh, some real problems. So you worry for Hearts, you think Rangers are almost there. As Steve says, funny things can happen. What a week it's been for Rangers and it looks like they're going to finish it with a trophy. Yeah, uh, and do you know what? I think they deserve it on the back of everything that's happened. I mean, the heartache of midweek to then come here. And look, Hearts played their part, but just Rangers have been the better team on the day. So, just about ready to get going. Second period of extra time on Five Live and BBC Sounds. 6.06 on the way for you this evening. Lines are open already, I'd imagine. 08.085. 909-693 is the number to dial to have your say on the phone in tonight. Stephen Kingsley with his left foot, left-sided centre-back for Hearts. Down the left-hand side to Ginelli. Ginelli tackled by Goldson, shoves Goldson to the floor. A little bit of frustration showing. Hearts have a throw, got to score early in this second period of extra time if we really are going to have a dramatic turnaround, as Pat was saying. Rangers' last appearance in the cup final. They were beaten by an Edinburgh team. Hibbs by three goals to two. Sakala being dragged back as he was trying to get away inside the Hearts half. So Craig Halkett will pick up a yellow card. And that was that was just a tired challenge. If he wouldn't have brought his yellow card out there, I think everyone was, I think a lot of people may have been on the pitch. <laughs> I think he had to. He had to just drag him back, didn't he? There was nothing else that he could have possibly done there. Sums up what he actually can do, Sakala. You mentioned the fact that he's got incredible pace. He's shown it once already, and now Hearts are wanting to push up on Rangers. They can't do it, really, can they? They're going to get done for pace if they do. Rangers 2, Hearts nil. Stunning start to extra time from Rangers. Definitely didn't want the penalties. Here's Sakala. Sakala's ball into right. Right tries to find Sakala again. The 1 2 doesn't quite come off. Hearts get it away, throwing for Rangers on the right. It's amazing. I mean, Obviously, the substitutions have been brilliant, but as a defender, the last thing you want to see is somebody else coming on and replace a player that's played that's got pace when you're tired and they've just linked up really well. Giovanni van Bronckhorst has, has played his hand quite beautifully this afternoon at Handon Park. Tavernier still attacking down the right. The ball is flicked away from him by Gary Mackay. Steven, another throw in for Rangers right in front of those Rangers fans. Rangers finishing this game, playing from right to left in this second period of extra time and those flags are way to our left those giant blue white and red rangers flags have not stopped waving all afternoon kamara gets tavernier away on the right takes a touch low ball in suitors there puts a right foot on it clears it out for another throw and at the moment it's one-way traffic at the moment and for quite a lot of moments before that it's in the last 15 minutes and you know impressed with the, the first half of uh, extra time but i think it's 20 25 30 minutes before that Rangers utterly dominant and they've just got more and more dominant and uh, it started exactly the same with this second half of extra time. Consolation for Hearts if it is any consolation it's obviously absolutely horrible to lose a final they will be in the Europa League playoff round at the start of next season so if they can win that one off two-legged tie they're into the Europa League group stages if they don't win it they do get group stage European football next season in the Europa Conference League Rangers will start in the third qualifying round of the Champions League next season having finished second in the Premiership ball into that Rangers box it bounces in front of McLaughlin he waits and he waits and he catches it cleanly with both hands on his goal line and slowly jogs out to the edge of his area I think the one thing about that is it's good for Scottish football moving forward I mean you've got two teams one straight into the Champions League Rangers trying to get there and obviously Hearts hopefully they can play at a high level so it's good for Scottish football in general that these teams are playing there regularly chested down by Bassey wide on the left finds the Finnish international Kamara former Arsenal man played to Ryan Kent who's uh, he's a wonderful player to watch for Rangers every time I see him hugely entertaining so dangerous with the ball at his feet Bassi has been equally dangerous this afternoon long throw down the left towards Sakala bundled into the ball it comes off him and goes out for a throw in 
to Hearts. So just over 10 minutes to play at Hampden Park. Rangers leading Hearts by two goals to nil. I suppose some one man has jumped into my head just now. I wonder what Steven Gerrard is doing just now. You know, a big part of you know the building Rangers to what they are yeah. at the moment. Here's Sakala. He's got quite a big game tomorrow afternoon. His Aston Villa team pack. Possibly could do still Liverpool. Be, still be watching. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Possibly could do Liverpool a favour, starting the day behind Manchester City in that Premier League table. We've got commentary on Manchester City against Aston Villa. That's where our commentary will start tomorrow afternoon. Game's kicking off at four o'clock. I'll be at Anfield for Liverpool Wolves. Liverpool, if they can get the result they want against Wolves, hoping that Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa can do them a favour. Rangers leading Hearts by two goals to nil. Atkinson plays the ball forward down the right, misplaced pass, couldn't find his teammate. Out it goes for a heart throw on the right-hand side. Thrown into Herring, the Austrian in central midfield. Back here to Craig Halkett. Halkett bobbles his pass across to Kingsley. Kingsley plays it to the left. Now Ginelli treads on the ball. Ryan Jack senses an opportunity quickly in to win it for Rangers. Tavernier tries to throw one forward with his right foot down the line. Blocked by Kingsley and out for a throw to Rangers. Hearts just remind me of that team. I've been in teams like it as well. You're playing against a superior opposition. And then when they score, you've done really well to keep it now now with that team. So you just know you're not going to score one, two, three goals. And it just sucks the life out of you. That's how they're playing. Rangers sweeping forward again. Score of the second goal. Scott Wright with the ball at his feet. Sakala's in space in the penalty area. Good save. Craig Gordon down low to his right. Makes a sharp save to stop it going to 3-0 to Rangers. You know, the only thing that can change it if your, your players don't seem to believe in what they've got is completely and utterly change it. I don't know if the referee's going to go for a yellow card here, possibly, but you change it. They've, they've stayed with the three at the back the whole way through it. And I know they're not brilliant with, you know, two centre-backs, but you're 2-0 down. There's only the cup, fi this cup final here. If you lose 2-0, you lose 4 now. what difference does it make? The temptation would be to say, even if you say to Suter, on your way up front, you play up front, give, give the centre forward a wee bit of help. Exactly. Give them something else to think about. And they've not done that. It was a Conor Goldson foul uh, on Josh Ginelli. So Hearts have a free kick, wide on the left, level with the angel of the Rangers box. Rangers still have to concentrate, still nine minutes or so to play in the cup final. If Hearts can get one back, that would give them a little bit of belief. Needs to be good delivery here from this left-hand side. Loads of maroon shirts in that Rangers penalty area. High, deep one to the far post, headed back across goal. McLaughlin comes, unchallenged, catches it cleanly for Rangers. Bowls it out under arm to Sakala. Sakala might put the afterburners on here. Away he goes, crosses the halfway line. Ball just bobbles off his left boot before he passes it to his left to Kent. Kent with a little trick to beat Herring. And Rangers again slow it down. Just play a bit of keep ball inside the Hearts half. Jack to Lundstrom, back to Jack. Jack strokes it across the halfway line to Tavernier. Tavernier looking for a teammate. That's Goldson behind him. Tired Hearts players having to chase this ball. Very dispiriting for them. Rangers fans, cock a hoop. You can hear their singing all around us at Hampden Park, heading towards the Scottish Cup for a 34th time in their history, leading Hearts by two goals to nil. Long ball forward, harmlessly into the arms of Craig Gordon. So the fairy tale of winning the cup again for Hearts doesn't look like it's going to be. Winner in 2006, here we are in 2022, made that fabulous save late in the game when Arebo really should have had a penalty, but nothing he could do about the two quality Rangers goals. Another hopeful ball punted forward for Rangers into the Hearts half. That was a, a, a tired effort, but Rangers could just say, well, look, Hearts, you're going to have to do something here. They've managed it quite well. A couple of times they've broken and they thought, oh, hey, why should we do this? Just get the ball back, run out the time down the clock a little bit as, as much as they possibly can. So there's been some fairly good game management in the second part of the, the extra time. Ball forward looking for Sims. Sims gets his body in the way, does well to win that for Hearts. Now Ginelli takes a touch, crowded out. Goldson in for Rangers to take it off him. Balogun's got to be careful, turns, plays back to his goalkeeper, McLaughlin, who gives it an almighty thump with his right foot downfield, all the way through to his opposite number, Craig Gordon, at the other end. Seven minutes away from party time for the Rangers fans. Rangers 2, Hearts 0. Heartbreak on Wednesday night. Elation here at Hampden Park 
on Saturday unless Hearts really can pull something very unexpected out of the fire. Not by giving the ball away, they won't. Kingsley's done that. Here's Tavernier on the right, looking for the pace of Sakala. Sakala takes on Suter. First touch wasn't great, and it comes through to Craig Gordon. I mean, it just sums football up, doesn't it, really, what you were talking about there? One minute you can be so low, the next minute you can be so high in just a matter of a few days. I mean, that's just the beauty of football. I'm not saying they'll forget the Europa League, but, you know, it, it helps, doesn't it? It helps. It sweetens it just a little bit, the medicine that they've had to take. I think particularly as well, having won the title last season after so long and seeing Celtic win it back this season, to em end this season empty-handed would have been really bad news. Yeah, of course. I mean, when you think about it, the, the Europa League final, the Scottish Cup final, if they didn't go with any of them at all, I mean, it would have been a devastating season. And of course, the Rangers were quite far ahead in the league as well at some yeah. point this, week, this year, so, you know, this, they really needed this as a club and as a group of players. Tough one for Hearts to take, six minutes to play, they're still trying, giving it everything they can, Suter's ball into midfield, back to Suter, Suter down the inside right channel, Bassey's across to win it for Rangers, stabs it down the line, Kent just keeps it in play, tackled by Herring, and out for a throw in to Rangers, Hearts felt they should have had a throw, but this has got away from them this game. And it's the Rangers fans who are going to enjoy their afternoon. Plenty of Hearts fans I can see have already left, making their way home. Ball back with McLaughlin, Rangers keeper, high, towering clearance down the middle of the field. Sakala jumps, beaten in the air by Halkett, offside flag is up. That'll be a, a free kick to Hearts. And Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, we were hearing about him, weren't we, before the game from Rob Jones. Just, he never gives never gives anything away, does he? On, on I'm, the I'm really looking forward to seeing his reaction. It's right at the end here. And uh, how, how how can a free kick be inside the Rangers half or offside? Yeah. <laughs> that's I think that's ridiculous. Fans, I think the Rangers fans have spotted that one. <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> spotted it. Unbelievable. Andy Halliday with the free kick. What if this ends up in the back of the net? Sims hits a right foot volley. Tired effort, dragged wide, took a deflection on the way through, but corner for half. They're all asking the question, I mean, it must know the rules. Yeah. There shouldn't have been a foul then if it was in there. Like, I mean, even the assistant referee over the far side should be flagging going, that can't happen, that's not allowed to happen. Although the referee may be saying, I've seen a different foul there. Maybe. Get <laughs> maybe saying that. So we're giving them the benefit of the doubt then. <laughs> well, I'm just trying try, try to find out some way because it makes no sense at all. John Lundstrom not giving him the benefit of the doubt. Corner for Hearts into the Rangers box. Herring jumps, volleyed away here by Bassey, just chipped back into the box by Atkinson, McLaughlin comes a long way but a miscommunication between him and Balogun, Balogun did the right thing, just heads it out of play, his goalkeeper is steaming up behind him, Rangers win a throw Bassey knocks the ball into the body of Makineff and Rangers get the throw. By the way I wasn't sure who was going to be given man of the match I know now well, uh, it's, it's, it's a simple to say. I mean there have been some unbelievable goals Ryan Jack but Bassey what, it's his performance on Wednesday to then replicate that yeah. today in a final has been just class oh, I do wonder if Leicester fans are watching you know they, they got him from Leicester for nothing yeah. a couple of seasons ago and thinking hmm had a player there but you know she sometimes as a youngster you need to go away yeah. find yourself then to come back being improved three minutes to play second period of extra time at Hampden Park Rangers almost there about to win their first Scottish Cup since 2009 13 years ago ball is inside the Hearts half Craig Gordon is out of position he's playing at left back here all in yellow clears with his left foot up towards the halfway line Herring flicks the header forward Ginelli battling with Goldson Goldson wins that battle Lundstrom is there to take up the running for Rangers overruns it and knocks the ball out of play he's another one who's going to be absolutely exhausted at the end of this don't care you just don't care as you walk around it's one of those ones you, if, when Rangers walk up the steps if, I think they're still doing the steps to get the trophy they will be absolutely wrecked going up yeah, those steps will. but they don't care oldest national football trophy in the world as we were learning from Roddy Forsyth earlier on today Halliday former Rangers man four hearts has won a late corner just over two minutes to play hearts are looking for two goals in two minutes to try and take this to a penalty shootout Rangers fans surely cannot bear the thought of that but they've got a corner to defend their team very quiet away to our right from those hearts fans in it comes header away from Kamara headed forward by Suter another header here out of the Rangers penalty area Kent Puts his left foot on it, hoists the ball high in the air. Underneath it is Makaneff. 
Another header from Suter, wide to the right, slight like miscontrol from Halliday. Guess who's there to block it? Calvin Bassey and wins the throw Every, for Rangers. Everything he touches. Absolutely everything Bassey touches. By the way, we're talking about his attacking play. Nothing wrong with his defensive play either, is there? Oh, absolutely nothing. Superb. Nice touch from Rangers here. 40 year old Alan McGregor is going to come on for the last minute of the cup final. Huge hug from his manager, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. So Alan McGregor is going to get to enjoy a minute here. Pure class. That's what that is. I mean, that's a guy who's served this club unbelievably well throughout the years. And this could be his final game. The, the other point there, actually, just looking in my notes here, Alan, he has three winners' medals for Rangers, but he was on the bench every time Rangers won the Cup. So this is this is the only minute he is going to have played of a, of a winning Cup final for Rangers. What a lovely moment. And Giovanni Van Broek has to understand the history of the club and the history of the players that are here to do that. That is joy. And by the Good way, it doesn't matter if he doesn't get a kick of the ball. <laughs> 30 seconds to play. This stadium is going to erupt shortly. Five live in BBC Sounds. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage this afternoon. Rangers winning this cup final in extra time, leading it by two goals to nil after the heartbreak of that Europa League final on Wednesday night. Lines are open for 6.06, 08085, 909, 693 as Rangers come looking for a third to seal it. Ryan Kent drives. Shot saved by Gordon. Kent loses his balance trying to get to the rebound. Kamara shoots Gordon with another fabulous save. A one-man line of defence. It could have been four or five in the end, but for Craig Gordon. One minute of added time at the end of the game and Scott Wright working as hard as ever for Rangers to cut out a counter-attack. Charges back to the halfway line, puts in a tackle, and actually Peter Herring's down hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's just great player. Ryan Kent showing great levels to get up there and get a good shot in. Unlucky Craig Gordon, he's been excellent today, hasn't he? Right. He's kept the score down. 30 seconds to play, Sims with a flick on, can Hearts get a late consolation? Ginelli to McInef, corner of the Rangers penalty area, Rangers fans waiting to explode with joy. McInef tries to win the corner, does win the corner, 15 seconds to play. Sims is down at the moment. That's so... just tiredness. <laughs> OK, picks himself up, not long to go. Corner for Hearts and then their pain and misery will be over. It's going to be three cup final defeats in four years for them. Corner from McInef, in it comes, header is over the bar and behind for the goal kick. It's all over. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst punches the air, the Rangers manager. It was devastation for him, his players and the Rangers fans in Seville on Wednesday night. But those broken hearts have been slightly mended at Hampden Park this afternoon. A first Scottish Cup final win since 2009 for Rangers. Goals in that first period of extra time from Ryan Jack and Scott Wright. They deserved it. An incredible effort from that Rangers team, mentally and physically. They've won the Cup. It's finished Rangers 2, Hearts 0. Steve. Listen to the sounds of Hamden Park. Rangers win their 34th Scottish Cup. Two goals in the, set, in the first half of extra time have got them there. There are flares going off to our left-hand side. The uh, stewards are now bringing on the, the stage for the trophy, the oldest national trophy in football, which is going to be presented over the course of the next few minutes. Uh, we've got Roddy Forsyth, Ali Bruce Ball, Pat Nevin, Alan Hutton, all with us. And Rangers, Alan, got over the line, and look, they deserve it. They did deserve it. I mean, after, obviously, what happened in Seville, they had to pick themselves up off the floor to go again, through extra time again, but they came out on top. I thought they were excellent through the 90 minutes. They just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, but two great goals to, to get it done for them. Brilliant performance. Pat, there were times when, during extra time, the stadium was moving. I was going to say it felt like it was moving. With the Rangers fans bouncing up and down, Hamden shook. Yeah, and it does. <laughs> the big ones, it absolutely does. But it, the passion that uh, is shown in Scottish football, obviously, lots of football around the world. But these fans have waited a long, long time for this. And uh, they, they really deserve that. I mean, I have to underline, hard work hard. But in terms of quality, in terms of fitness, unbelievably, Rangers were miles ahead. Now, they went to extra time 
that would have been a travesty had Rangers not won this, this competition. They were the best team there by a, by a real distance. And add on top of that, the manager. He had to make some decisions, big decisions before this game started. If you're the manager and you think, well, that player's tired, he's tired, who can cope with it? Do I know my players? Do I know their fitness as well enough? And then I need to make some changes. I need to make some substitutions. Well, they're not bad, are they? Both come on and score goals. That's OK. No, he absolutely nailed it. And as Alan spotted it right at the end there, the touch of class to bring your goalkeeper on with a minute to go so that you can have this farewell moment. It, it was brilliant. I don't think I don't think they've put many feet wrong tonight, but certainly Giovanni Van Brockhorst didn't put a single foot wrong. And Roddy, not that this was ever in doubt, but that decision to, to bring him on right at the end, it just shows that he gets it. Gio Van Broncos gets it. The Rangers support applauded that full-heartedly. And uh, I would imagine that even the Hearts supporters leaving this stadium, that when they think about that later, they will think, as you have said, a touch of class. And there was a point at which I wondered if the gods of football were just toying with Rangers. There was the penalty incident just before it goes to extra time. They'd hit the crossbar. They'd staggered out of a final in Seville. They'd only just had enough time to have a couple of sleeps and go on this pitch. And yet, as you say, two substitutes. That's the way to win a game. But above all, every man we saw out there in a blue jersey had character. Character in abundance. There's a man in a yellow jersey who showed so much of that as well, and that's the Hearts goalkeeper, Craig Gordon, who is still out on the pitch, just shaking a couple of hands, walking like a man who's really been through it this afternoon. He made save after save after save, but even his performance wasn't enough. And now you can see it was ever thus on Cup final day, looking away to our right-hand side. The Hearts end is almost empty on the left. Not a single Rangers seat has been left. James Tavernier, Alan, has just led the players charging over to the far side. You know, they're just on adrenaline now. They, yeah. How have they got any energy to do anything? Yeah, exactly. And it, it's great to see from James Tavernier because you think of what all these fans have went through over the last few days. The, the amount of money and stuff they've spent travelling to watch their team. So giving that back to them with a special moment, go over, celebrate with them again. James Tavernier knows what it's like. He's been through different times with the club. This is the good time and he wants to celebrate it with the main people. Incidentally, Lundstram, Wright and Bassey, three players who started here uh, in a way that did not convince the Ranger support, who looked rocky. They've been transformed into heroes over the course of this season. And Kelvin Bassey's been transformed from a centre-back to a left-back to a left-winger. He's everything. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what his best position is. Isn't it the case that Strictly come dancing and I'm trying to sign him? <laughs> you know, honestly, today, I've not seen any signs up for the man of the match. Oh, I've just seen it there. Guess what? They went for Calvin Bassey. <laughs> Strange that. It was the most obvious decision you could make. He was absolutely brilliant. To be honest, I'll give him the highest compliment. It was almost hotness. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. No, he was an absolute warrior today. I mean, the performance he put in on Wednesday to again go the distance today, nobody got by him. He, he, in key areas, he was putting deliveries in the box, making things happen. Excellent performance, 10 out of 10. The, the best compliment I can think of for Rangers at the minute, Pat, is that you know, they played 120 minutes and penalties and had their hearts broken in the week. They played another 120 minutes today. There were times during the, set, the first half of extra time. It looked like an August afternoon for them, like it was the first game of the season. I suppose they weren't worked as hard by hearts, you know, as they were by Eintracht Frankfurt, who were KCR and a little bit more going forward. But that doesn't matter. You still have to be able to go through it. Now, it's not just that those 120 minutes that during the week they have these 120 minutes. It's the end of a season. They have worked so hard all the way through the season. We've talked about all the games that they've had. But to still have that energy right at the end of it. And by the way, you talk about the pain. Roddy mentioned the pain of the last couple of days and travelling. Right, go on, let's multiply that a few times. What about the pain in the last 12 years that yeah. a lot of these Ranger fans have gone through? It's been hell for them to go through what they've gone through. So that when you hear that and you feel that come through that stadium, that's what you're feeling. You're feeling over a decade of pain. The booze for the officials as they leave the field. And Willie Collin made a couple of 
shall we say, contentious decisions. Uh, he's just walking up the steps in front of us now, and he'll receive his medal. Uh, not for the Rangers fans, Roddy, particularly pleased with his performance. Willie is a head teacher of religious education at a Lanarkshire high school, and after one of our games, one of his pupils put on the school website, don't give up the day job, sir. So it's not just them. <laughs> Referees are not popular wherever they go. The Rangers players now are just down beneath us. Uh, the uh, the trophy presentation will happen very shortly. I guess, Ali, I mean, you're a marathon runner. Rangers I... today were like the marathon runner just coming into the final 100 metres. They just well, found something. Yeah, I mean, that is very kind of you to describe me as a marathon runner. I've run one, I hit the wall at 18 miles, and I was not moving like those Rangers players for the last eight miles of that last year. I, I'm, I'm really been taken aback by their mental strength and physical strength today, see, there, there was just no denying them, I think had Hearts got the early goal, Sims hit the outside of the post early on, then we might have had a different story, but in the end, Rangers were too good and deserved the win, and I think Calvin Bassey there has just been announced over the tannoy as the man of the match, huge beaming wide smile, and these Rangers players are going to make the march, so what they're going to do is march up the steps beneath us in the stand we're in, I'm standing on tiptoes here, and I can just see that beautiful, it's a really good looking trophy actually, gleaming under, under grey skies here at Hampden Park, James Tavernier is, is on his way, he will be the first to get his winner's medal, and then he will wait for all his teammates to get their medals, and then he will lift the trophy and then they will bring that there's a, there's a little stage Steve that's been built out in the middle of the pitch for our listeners benefit uh, which has Scottish Cup final 2022 written at the top of it winners 2021-22 and the Rangers players will be on their way and continue their celebrations uh, down there all the hard work all the emotion all the energy has been well well worth it yeah absolutely the trophy is about to be lifted. Hearts have put in so much effort this afternoon to try and get over the line, but it is Rangers Trophy Alley, and in a second, they'll hoist it high. Yeah, well, you can see them all gathered together. There's there's barely enough space for the entire squad there, all in their light blue shirts, substitutes stripped off uh, as well. And like I say, you, you just, you cannot begrudge them it at all, Pat, particularly you were there on Wednesday night, the pain of losing that game not only on penalties but a game that wasn't necessarily in their hands but they could have won but they could have won that and here they are they get their reward today yeah and they're going to love this moment we can't quite see him we have, we can actually see the trophy just where it is just now he's not turned up no ground yet Tavernier He's teasing everyone just a bit. <laughs> there are a few more medals to be handed out here. Leon Balogun is just getting his right. Here we go now. The Rangers players giving it the old handshake here, trying to get the fans going. The cup is in the hands of James Tavernier. He's jogging on the spot, drumming his feet, lifts it in the air. Rangers end the season with silverware. Their first Scottish Cup win since 2009. It was devastating, heartbreaking defeat for them in the heat of Seville on Wednesday night. But they've got their rewards for a fabulous performance this afternoon. They've beaten Hearts in the Cup final. And now every single Rangers player wants to get their hands on the trophy. Connor Goldson is there. They're all kissing it. They are shaking it. And quite rightly, Alan Hutton, they are having the time of their lives. Yeah, they are. And they've worked ever so hard. It must have been such a difficult couple of days to pick yourself back up, to go again. And they showed how strong they are mentally as a group, how willing they are to work for each other to get this done and get it over the line. And look, you see how much it means to them. And then just that little bit at the end, I know I'm saying it again, but that touch of class for Alan McGregor to come on the pitch, this could be his last appearance in a Rangers trip, I thought was just pure quality. Just wondering whether Alan McGregor is going to get to do what everyone is doing here. He's moving himself into position. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst gets the biggest roar there. The manager is, he lifts the trophy to the sky. What a job he has done, actually, since taking over from Stephen Gerrard. Yeah, it's a tough one to do, you know, because, you know, Stephen was much loved up here. A lot of Rangers fans very disappointed that he left, but he's come in. Obviously, the league has been a problem for them, but to get all the way to your old league final, and then get the Scottish Cup final win. And it really does bode well, doesn't it, for the future. But not just Rangers, it's Scottish football, as Alan McGregor uh, Alan was saying earlier. Because they are looking stronger, they will build next season. They have got a very, very good coach. 
It'll be a very interesting domestic situation in Scotland next season, but also what they do in Europe. Last man down the steps with the trophy in his hands, 40-year-old goalkeeper Alan McGregor. And it's funny, Steve, because at the start of the day, we were talking about the potential goalkeeper narratives with McLaughlin at one end, McGregor on the bench. Craig Gordon was absolutely brilliant for Hearts again. It wasn't to be his day, but what a lovely touch, as we've all said at the end of that final. And Alan McGregor is front and centre now on this stage in the middle of the Hampden Park pit, right next to the skipper, James Tavernier. As Alan said, he, he has been a fabulous servant, hasn't he, McGregor for Rangers? Yeah, he's been amazing, honestly. Some of the big moments, the uh, Werder Bremen, the uh, Slavia Prague save, he got them to the 2008 final, and now this is just putting the icing on the cake. The only disappointing thing for me is, can, is this going to be his last game? Because it could go on, but such a shame. Flamethrowers blasting at Hampden Park, confetti whirling in the air, champagne being sprayed everywhere, and Giovanni Bron Van Bronckhorst, very sensibly there, Steve, waiting for the champagne to be sprayed, hasn't got the suit ruined, and then he moves in and joins the celebration. Yeah, you can just feel the heat on your face every time the flames go up in the air. What an incredible occasion. Let's bring Chris Sutton in as well. Uh, Chris, Rangers deserved it today, didn't they? Yes, they did. I had my eye on the, the Sunderland game as well. Well, but uh, you know, and I flicked over to watch Rangers. I, I've got a lot of admiration for the way they've picked themselves up after the uh, the, the loss in midweek. The players would have been hurting, but uh, they thoroughly deserved it. Lots of guts and character, but more than that, uh, the quality which they possess. And they've been a good uh, team this season. They have been, and uh, I saw that odd comparison you had, Steve, with Ali's marathon running and Rangers. <laughs> I didn't quite get that one. But uh, I think that Gio Van Bronckhorst will be, you know, pleased to finish this season with a piece of silverware. The uh, the confetti has actually only just hit the floor. It was just hanging in the air. It still is. Some of it, that blue, red and white ticker tape. Uh, Alan Hutton, anything you'd, you'd like to say to Chris? Oh, it was just nice to hear him there congratulate Rangers and, and really mean it for once. So well done, Chris, on that. I'm not, I'm not so sure I meant it. I think you did. I could hear it in your voice. Come on. Yeah, it's it's true though, Chris, what Pat was just saying. You know, the strength of that Celtic team to win the league, the strength of this Rangers team getting to a European final, winning their first Scottish Cup since uh, 2009. You know, we've got two very, very strong teams here. Yeah, and it's it's good for the game north of the border. It absolutely is. I mean, you know, going back to, to my day and, and Alan uh, came into the, the Rangers team, we played against each other a few times. It was so close between the two teams. That's what Scottish football needs. That's what Scottish football wants. This season has been uh, brilliant and, uh, and on to next season. Very difficult to call. Let's talk about the uh, the great goal which effectively won the cup final, Alan. Ryan Jack strike. It was that clean that the first couple of times we watched it, we thought, did it take a little nick just to accelerate it? But it didn't. Yeah, we thought possibly it might take a little nick on the way through, but even when the ball drops to him, he's not well known for scoring multiple goals. I was thinking, is he going to shift it and shoot sure, it's going to pass? But he nearly took the leather off the ball, the netting off. It was just a fantastic strike, and to beat Craig Gordon, somebody with that quality and goals with a strike like that, you know it's a winning strike. Chris, we have to have a word on, on Hearts as well. I know you're saying you were mainly focused on the uh, the League One playoff final, but you know all about Craig Gordon. We all know all about Craig Gordon, and genuinely, without him, it could have been five. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's, he's been such a brilliant goalkeeper for Hearts, for Celtic. He had a, you know, a really good spell. Um, <sighs> If I'm honest, um, from what I saw of the game, Hearts, I don't think they had a shot on target, I think. It, uh, it, you know, I, I think I'm right in saying that. Didn't do enough going forward. I know they hit the post early on in the game. I think there'll be a disappointment from Robbie Nielsen. You know, uh, a, a, another cup final and not getting over the line. But I think the players will be disappointed, but Rangers on the day were, were far too good for them. We're, uh, we're going to go off to Wembley in a second, Chris. So tell us what else you uh, you want to get people calling in on 6.06. We've had a few big finals. Well, we 